morning, good morning, good morning. Philadelphia Christian Church, how y'all doing this morning? Hey. I just want to do it just a touch, just to be sure that they can hear us if we're live right now. Yes. I want to make sure that the live stream could hear us. So if the sound is good, we're going to get a thumbs up. Uh, if y'all are in the chat right now, man, put a thumbs up if you can hear us. Yes. If you can't hear us, type in the chat, hey, we can't hear you. And uh, we're going to do something to get the settings just, just right. We want to be sure that we... We live and direct, and it's all, yes, we want it's all good this morning. Yes. So we want y'all to hear us this morning. Yes. Amen. Amen. Beautiful Sunday morning today. It is. I don't know about where you're at, but it's hot in Louisiana. Oh, look, I'm, I'm it, done. It, yeah, the heat, I'm, I'm kind of get done. tired of the heat, man. Like, seriously, like, I was in the car yesterday, and I was yeah. like, Lord, please just let Mercy. me in the gate. Because <laughs> uh, it's, it's hot. Yeah, man. And, and so hot. I don't know about you, where you in your, your state, but... um. It's been crucial. So we're praying for some cool weather to come in. Yes. Hopefully soon. Something. Hopefully very soon. Because even when the wind blows, it's just been a hot breeze. It's a, it is a hot breeze. Yeah. It's, a, it's hot. Help us, Lord. But, you know, yes. kind of little, just a little reminder of, you know, it's hot, but the hell is hotter. So right. make your salvation sure. And, uh, make sure. <laughs> believe on Jesus and you're going to yes. be all right. Yes. <laughs> Amen, amen. We get a thumbs up. We, we sound, we good? We good to go? We're good to go? All right. All right. We're going to get it started. We're going to get it started. So welcome to Philadelphia Christian Church, yes. Church of the Hebrews, where we worship in spirit. And in truth. And in the truth. Yes. I am Deacon James Malvo. And I am Deacon Nishalanda. And we are so, so happy to have you with us on this morning. So James, we're going to get right into Let's it. Let's get it started. Right now, it's time All for right. some good news of the week. All right, so first off, we want to say a happy birthday to Destiny P. Destiny P. Happy birthday from your husband Terrence, your daughters, and your extended family. They Amen. say you are loved. Oh, Shad, look at that. Oh, look Shad, at that. yes, we can see the picture. You still see Destiny right there. Yes, that's, her, <laughs> that's Destiny. That's Destiny. Man. Yes, Glory so God. Destiny, we want to say a happy, happy birthday, girl. And look, if you got some of that cheesecake, I'm going to be by there. To get a piece oh, later. Oh, you having cheesecake? Yeah, she oh, loves. She like has the cheesecake. best cheesecake. Oh, I like, love cheesecake. Yes. Oh, that's 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 the cake right out. Yes. Come on now, glory to God. Happy birthday to Destiny Pete. Also, we got man. There's a new book. We have an author that emailed us. Uh, must be one of our online families that's been watching us. Uh, Victoria Davis. She has released her first book, and the name of her book is called "The Error of Our Ways in Great. Ourselves." And right. our families. Her book is available on Amazon. So go ahead and go to Amazon. Type in her name, Victoria Davis. And the book is called The Error of Our Ways in Ourselves and Our Families. Support our Hebrew authors yes, out there, man. Absolutely. Her book is available on Amazon. Her first book. And I'm praying pretty sure it won't be. It's the first of many. Yes, the first of many. I mean. Hebrews, we just doing it all over. Yeah, we, we got a lot of writers, man. And look, and everybody yeah. got a story. The Lord, Holy Spirit, drop something on you, man. Write that thing down. Write it down. And put that thing out. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Because you never know who you're going to help exactly. or inspire. Amen. Amen. So I just, just want to jump in and add a oh, one you got more. Some? I do. Okay, all right. Tell just a little it. something. Okay. So I just want to wish my husband a happy anniversary. We will be celebrating 21 years, y'all. 21. 21. Come on, man. We Lord legal. God. 21. <laughs> <laughs> we <laughs> legal. 21 years on this Thursday, August 17th. Amen. So Jonathan Thorne, I love you. It's been the best 21 years. And praying God many, many more to come. Amen. Amen. So, y'all yeah. be the big 21. Man, I'm proud 21. of y'all, man. Yeah, I mean, y'all inspiration. We grown. Y'all grown now. Here we grow. <laughs> Glory to God. Hey, saints of God, look, if you got any good news, you got a birthday, anniversary, a new business, or a new graduate, send it over to Philly Office 1 at yahoo.com by 3 p.m. on Thursday so that we can feature it right here on the good news of the week. Yes, by 3 p.m. on Thursday. All right, yes. so we, let's get to some more announcements. All right, so our new set of discipleship training classes new started set. on today, and those classes are... Putting you on the goodness of God daily, forgiveness, friends are foe, the spiritual gifts class, and what is faith? Okay. We also have our kids 4 to 6, our youth 7 to 11, and our youth 12 to 17. So you definitely want to make sure you get here for 810 to check out those classes. We have some awesome teachers, awesome classes, like usual. Look, come in, like we say, get the word before the word. That's it. Yeah. And hey, this That's goes real. down in discipleship training. That's it. 8, 10 to 8, 50 every Sunday morning. Come get some word before, before the, word. the word. Yes. Love it, man. Love it. 
All right, Saints of God, we want to uh, bring your attention to your event calendar. What I want you to do is write the date October 5th through the 8th. That is our first annual Feast of Tabernacles. First Feast annual. of Tabernacles. The first yes. time doing it, man. We've got a lot of things that we're going to be happening that's going to be going on that weekend. You can register right now. Registration is now made available on our website. Go to www.philadelphiacc.org. We got a bunch of things that's going to be happening. We got a word on that um, on October 5th in our welcome reception. We're also going to have a health fair that's going to be going on. Um, we're also going to do, there's going to be a women's luncheon. Wow, yes. So the women are going to get together. Yes. And they're going to do some, some lunch or brunch and, and Chop it up with do one it another. Chop, and chop it up. Chop it up. Yeah. Do y'all think? You know. And then the men, we doing a camp out, man. So we gonna camp it out, man. And we gonna be under the stars and set that bonfire on fire. And we gonna eat some good food. We gonna eat all night. And we gonna talk about the word and yeah, and just fellowship. I love the camp outs because this is a time where the men, them, them brothers can talk. The brothers be quiet, but when them brothers get together, them brothers can talk. And, oh, wow. And we gonna talk. It's gonna be good. Yeah, y'all. Uh, we also gonna have basketball tournaments, wow. softball tournaments. The kids can get in. We're gonna have a 5K run, uh, uh, run or walk. We have a color run for the kids. So, man, you wanna be a part of this uh, enormous event for our first time doing uh, the Feast of Tabernacles, October 5th through the 8th. Registration is open right now. Go to our website, philadelphiacc.org. Yeah, you know how we do it for. Uh, all the other. Y'all, yeah, Passover. So y'all already we know. It, so we we're going back to our holidays, we man. We doing it, yeah. We doing it, we yeah. Doing it for real. We doing it. Amen. So, all right. We got one we more able? thing. Okay. One more thing. New day prayer. No, 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 no. We got okay. another event coming up. Okay. Karaoke night. Karaoke yes, night. Yes, yes. Oh, karaoke yes. night. That is uh, okay. that's August, August twenty fifth, Friday night, seven o'clock, man. We gonna have some fun. We just all gonna come together. It's sponsored by the Philadelphia worship team. They're doing this karaoke night. It's so it makes sense though for them to do right. like I a mean, karaoke, karaoke night. The worship yeah. team, you know what I'm saying, sponsoring it. So yeah. come on out, man. We gonna have a good time. We gonna sing songs. We gonna laugh at one another and just have a whole bunch of holy fun, man. In I, the Lord. Yeah, I, I, I'm looking yeah, so forward you, you to it. You gonna sing? No, I was gonna ask you the same thing. I'm, I, I'm, I'm gonna try. I, I was gonna ask I mean, you if you, know, you, you know. I'm gonna try to get my sing on a little bit. This my now this opportunity. You know. If you can't sing, you can do it. Now. Come try. I mean, you it's know. karaoke. It's karaoke. We're gonna have fun. You know, it's gonna be good. It's gonna yeah. be good. Yeah. Amen. So mark your calendars. August 25th. That's a Friday night karaoke night. Other regular announcements, man. Monday through Friday, noonday prayer. Yes, 12:15 to 1 p.m. Come on out on your lunch break if you have um, a day off. Come on in and get that little shot in your arm for the rest of the week. That's New it. day prayer goes down every day, 12.15 to 1 p.m. All right, Tuesday Bible study uh, will be going on. It will not be live stream, so you got to be in the building for Tuesday night Bible study at 7 o'clock. Yes. We also have Wednesday in Atlanta, Bible study 7.30, located at 260 Forest Parkway in Forest Park, Georgia. Also Thursday night in Dallas, Texas, 7 p.m., located 3269 Independence Parkway, Plano, Texas. So if you're in the area, check out those Bible studies in Atlanta or in Dallas. Yes. Wednesday and Thursday nights. I think we covered everything. We I got think, it. I think we got it all my, now. My feet is kind of moving. I think we're ready oh. to worship. I feel, it in, my, I feel it in my toes. Oh, oh, oh. The toes. not the toes. Yeah, the toes. Oh, ready, the toes. Ready to, okay. Ready to move. So let's right. go right now. Stand yes. to your feet. Let's get ready. Let's worship God Yahweh. Let's go. It's time to worship. It's worship time. Hallelujah. We come to worship the King on today. Come on, just lift up your voice and say, You reign. Come on, shout out to God and say, you reign. Hallelujah, he reigns above all. Hallelujah. Over circumstances, despite what's going on. Hallelujah. So we're going to lift him up today. Simple song, it says, my God reign. My God reign. I God reign. I God reign. Say, Lord, you reign above all. Every night with power, with power and majesty, all the minions of our redeemed Come on, say it with power and majesty, with power and majesty, minions of our redeemed You reign. We're gonna say it again. Oh, say, My God reign, my God reign, I God reign, I God reign, say, Lord, you reign. Oh, my God, rain. 
somebody need him to do it for you today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh God, my God, I
free in hearts right now. You are the same God. You are the same God. You touch the lepers and I feel your touch right now. You are the same God. You are, let's sing it out. You free. You free the captives. You're free in hearts You're right now. Right you are, now. you are the same God. You are, you are the same. You touch the lepers. You touch the lepers. I feel your touch. I feel your, your touch, touch right, right now. now. You are the same God. You are the same. You free, you free in captive You're free in hearts right now. You are the same.
Anybody need a fill up today? See, the thing about filling up, to fill something up, the only way something can be filled up, it, something has to be open. <laughs> there must be an opening in order for you to fill something up. You can't take a bottle of Coke and ask God to fill me up. You have to open it. Something has to be open in order for God to fill up. And at this moment, God wants us to open our hearts so that he can pour into us everything that he has planned for our lives. But he's looking for an open heart. He's looking for someone that's open. Someone to expose themselves. Someone to release themselves. Someone to let go and let him take control. Someone to just truly give him total submission, to give him total permission for him to rule and reign in your hearts. It won't happen with a prideful heart. It won't happen with your nose up. But it happens when we humble ourselves and we let God reign upon the throne of our hearts. God, fill us up, God, to the overflow. Take control, God. We believe, God.
like you believe it. Does God's word ever fail? So if he says, by his stripes, you are healed. What does that mean? Does it mean you're healed? If he said, I shall supply all of your needs according to my riches and glory, what does that mean? Right, he's going to supply. If he says that you are the head and not the tail, what does that mean? His word can't fail. It can't return unto him void. It has to accomplish the thing that he said for it for it to accomplish, right? But that's his word. He's done his part. Now it's time for us to do something. The other part of the song says, I believe. This is the thing. It's already done in the spirit. It's already done God has already done his part. He said it is finished. But the thing is, are we going to believe? Are we going to trust? When he says, yes, by his stripes I am healed, or are we going to say, well, I, got to, I, I am healed, but I, I need to take this, you know. I, I know he's going to supply, but I need to. No. The song says, he said it, and I believe. And what was the last part? It's done. You see the connection that has to be made? If there's no connection, then it's not done. And brothers and sisters, I just want to encourage you today, man. We, we was in discipleship training this morning, and, and uh, I went, went to uh, Deacon Barris' class, and he was talking to, about faith. And it was a situation that happened, man, when, when, the, when the centurion servant, or the military guy, his servant was, was sick. And he, he needed Jesus to come and pray for him. But he understood that at that time, Jesus didn't really come for them. He was a Gentile. 
he came to his house, the house of Israel. He came to the Hebrews, right? But the story goes like this. The centurion God, he understood authority and he told Jesus, he says, man, look, I'm not even worthy for you to even to come into my house. He said, but I know if you just say the word, if you say the word, what happened with him is he believed already. In his head, it was already settled. If this man right here could just say the word, my servant, that's all the way two miles away, I know he's going to be healed. And what happened, Jesus told him, he said, I have not seen this kind of faith in the entire Hebrew nation. I have not seen this kind of faith that this Gentile got with nobody else in all of Israel. 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 When are you going to believe? When are you going to believe? Everything that you want, everything that you desire, he already has it. He's already said it. He's already committed it to you. All you have to do is believe it. Amen. Let's pray. Most high God, we just thank you. Right now, God, we, Father, we just give you praise, oh God. Father, for your love and your, your kindness, God, that you pour out to us every single day. God, we just ask forgiveness, Lord God, as a, as a nation, as a people, God. Because, Father, we don't always believe like we should. We don't always trust like we should. Father, I know, Lord God, that your love is still there for us. And I know there's a situation where the guy told you, he said, I believe, but help my unbelief, God. Holy Spirit, I pray that today, Lord God, that our faith would be increased, God. Father, I pray that today, Lord God, would be uh, just a new day for us, God, that we would totally trust and put our trust in you, God. If your word says it, Lord God, that we're going to stand on it and we're going to watch it come to pass. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for always reminding us, Lord God, that we need to increase our faith, that we need to put our trust in you, Father. We thank you so much, Lord God, for just not giving up on us, God. Father, when in situations that we totally give up on you, Father, we love you this morning. And Father, I pray now, Lord God, that as we made that declaration, you said it, I believe it, and that's done. Father, I pray, Lord God, that that would be our attitude, Lord God, until you return, Most High. Father God, I pray, Lord God, for every single person that none of us would be, uh, 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 we, we, that we would be steadfast and unmovable, Lord God, in your word, Father God. Just, just knowing, Lord God, that when you say something, that is done. Holy Spirit, we give you free access in this place today. We pray that our hearts would be open to receive every single morsel, every single just ounce of your word that comes forth across this pulpit today. Father, we thank you for this time. And Father, thank you for having us in this place, Father. Bless our time together, Most High. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 As you go to your seat, tell five people, God said it and I believe it. Hallelujah. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Philadelphia Christian Church, guys. Thank you all so much. As always, man, for worshiping with us this morning. How y'all doing this morning? Are y'all ready for a very productive week coming up this week? Are y'all ready for a mighty word that's getting ready to come from uh, Bishop Omar? Are y'all excited or what? Because this is the thing, man. We Sometimes God just got to remind us that, look, man, it's already done. Every single thing you want, I got you. I got you. Just trust me. Because I know there's none of y'all checked on them seats to make sure them legs was right. Y'all just sat on. Y'all had faith to believe in that. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, brothers and sisters, man, we had a great time in worship. But now we're just going to continue uh, worship. And it's time for tithes and offerings. Amen. If we can have the baskets to the front, please. Yep, yep, yep. 
time for us to give back to God, just a little bit of what he gave to us. Now, you can give a little or you can give a lot. If you trust his word, what does his word say about giving a little? You're going to get a little. His word also says, if you give a little bit more, guess what? You're going to get a little bit more. But it's according to your faith. We got some faith walkers, faith believers in here this morning? All right, all right. So, brothers and sisters, man, I, I know you probably already uh, decided and prepared in your heart what you're going to give, but if you have not, or if, if you did, I just want to make sure that you always give God your best gift. This right here is not just coming in and giving God something, you know, like it's his birthday, you know, you give them a little $20 for the birthday for them children. You usually can give five, but now them children look at you funny when you give $5. You, you got to come with at least a 20 or something now. But this is the thing, man, we're giving a portion of what the Most High has blessed us with. If he has truly been good to us this week, man, you make sure in turn you show your gratitude by giving back to him. Now, as many different ways as you can give, you can give here in the baskets. Uh, also, you man, you can give electronically. Uh, you can give on the church app. All you got to do is go and click the donate button. Also, you can give on cash app, cash tag PCCLA. You can text and give 2940050. I just want to let you guys know that the uh, uh, text to give has been updated. Um, so uh, I think there's, there's two different tabs. One is going to say a recurring giving. Uh, that's going to be the first one. But if you just want to do a one-time gift, please make sure that you click on the one-time giving. Amen? Also, you can click on the website, philadelphiacc.org, and you can also give there. The thing is, it doesn't really matter how you do it. The thing is, is that you do it and do it with a cheerful heart, an exciting heart, or just a, a glad to say, Most High God, I know you bless me, and I'm so excited to give just this back to you. Amen? So, brothers and sisters, stand to your feet, put a smile on your face. It's time for tithes and offerings. Amen.
God was getting the announcements together. Amen. All right, what, what, what's all what, for the rest? For the rest of the year. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. For the rest of the year, we are gonna be blessed. Now, this is the thing. Now, you have to be expecting something to happen yet. Because this is the thing, man. Believing, and when you believe something, if somebody tell you, man, you know, uh, like for your birthday or something, they say, man, you know, you're getting a new bike for your birthday. Well, you already didn't told everybody in the neighborhood, oh, come February 17th, I'm gonna have that new. Well, not BMX. You probably will get that Murray. Well, where I was, you got the Murray. You didn't get the BMX or the diamond back. <laughs> no, 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 you got that. But that Murray did good, though. You know, it did just as good. And Schwinn, oh, no, that was, that sounded like a Jewish name. We didn't have that in our house. Schwinn, no, uh-uh. But, but, you, but we were expecting it. And that's the thing, how you have, you have to be like that. You have to be expecting. Man, I got a tithing testimony. Man, I, I was blessed this morning with just a hundred dollars this morning. I thank God for it. You know, I was expecting that. And I was like, you ain't giving it to me yet? What you waiting on? I didn't tell them that, you know, but I just wanted to, the Lord bless. Amen. You have to be expecting. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get to some announcements this morning. Uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> regular announcements is always uh, Monday through Friday, man, noonday prayer uh, here at the church, 12:15, 1 to 1 o'clock. Um, yes, man, we are in here, um, bombarding heaven on behalf of not only you as the church, but also uh, the, the country and the world. And uh, we need some help in prayer. Prayer is a very powerful thing. It's a very important thing. And sometimes I don't think us as believers, man, we take prayer as seriously as we should. Uh, prayer is a very serious thing. It's us communicating and talking to our God. And, man, he's, he's there. They, oh, his ears are open and ready to listen. So, man, if you are available, if you can make yourself available, Monday through Friday, 1215 to 1 o'clock, man, we're here at the church uh, doing noonday prayer. Also, uh, we have Bible study, uh, in-person Bible study, Tuesday, Lafayette. Yes, give God some praise for that, man. We want you to be here in the house uh, Wednesday, Atlanta is going to be doing their thing, uh, in-person Bible study, man. If you're in Atlanta, if you're in the Atlanta area, don't miss it. Make your way to it. Also, Thursday, Dallas is your turn, so do your thing. Everybody, if you're in the Dallas area, man, come on out uh, and be blessed by the, uh, by the Bible studies. All right, guys, let's see what now announcements we have this morning. Discipleship training has started. Amen? And I'm going to tell you this here. Usually I got things I be doing in the morning and I, 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 I don't always go to discipleship training. But Minister Sam put something on my heart uh, a few weeks back. And he said, he said, man, even as leaders inside the church, it, it, do we ever think that we have arrived? That there's, we don't need to be at discipleship training? Or, or is it that we or think that, man, we good. Man, I, you know, I'm, I'm good. I, I read my Bible last week, so I don't really need to go in depth. I can come get, nah, man, we all need as much of God as we can. Amen? So, look, I want to just to put it on you and really, really encourage you, man. Discipleship training has just started. Today was the first day. I was in, well, you see how I came out of here? I looked like the Lord was speaking to me. It's just, we talked about faith in discipleship training this morning, man. Deacon Baird did an awesome job. So, uh, yes, so the discipleship training is at Philadelphia Christian Church. And as they put it back up, I'm going to read off of that board what the discipleship training classes is. There we go. All right, so we have uh, putting on the goodness of God daily. All right, we have forgiveness, friends or foes. Also, the spiritual gift class. If you have not, if you have saved and maybe you're just getting into the faith or maybe you've been in the faith but you never just pinpoint exactly what your spiritual gift is. Man, you can find that out, spiritual gift class. And uh, what is faith? That's the one I was in this morning, man, and it really, really blessed me. Uh, kids, four to six, uh, have their own youth 7-Eleven, and then the youth 12 to 17. So look, guys, make it your business on Sunday mornings, man, to be here just a little bit early for discipleship training. Amen? All right, mark your calendars, August 25th. Uh, that's Friday night. The Praise and Worship Ministry is putting on the karaoke night. Now, I know I got a, they got a bunch of uh, shower singers in here, uh, but it's time to let your gift be made known. So, you know, you know, even though you don't know all the words, they're going to put the words up there, and when you don't know the words, just listen to the turn, turn around. Blessings on blessings. Blessings on blessings. You know, and that's all you got to do, man. So come on our karaoke night on August 25th. 
All right, the very next day, evangelism ministry. Man, rock with us. It's going to be doing their outreach at Cadiana Park. Look, let's start getting the word out now, early, man, that we're going to be in Acadiana Park or at 5 o'clock, uh, Deacon Bryce is going to be spearheading everything with the evangelism team. Man, we want us as a church not only to come out, but let's invite some people, man, and get them excited about what God is doing in the neighborhoods and not just here in the four walls. All right, uh, let's see. That's on the 26th. I also think Titus is meeting on the 26th also, right? Is that correct? Titus is meeting uh, the 26th uh, Saturday morning. Um, so, yeah, um, and you can get with any of the Titus ministry. Oh, they do have good snacks and good lunch. They, they eat good at Titus Ministry. <laughs> All right, what else we got? Men's group coming up August 31st. Uh, men's group, yes. Iron sharpens iron, man. We're going to be uh, getting together. It's the last Thursday of the month. And not only that, man, uh, well, that's a lot for August. August got a lot going on. Um, but also coming up, one of our major feast days is coming up, and we as a church is going to be celebrating it together, not only with just uh, all of you here, but all of our out-of-town members and online members. Feast of Tabernacles, October 5th through the 8th. That's right. We are celebrating. Uh, Feast of Tabernacles. Guys, you can go to the website and register philadelphiacc.org. Just scroll down. You're going to see the Feast of Tabernacles uh, um, uh, section where you just need to log in. There's a whole lot of things going on starting on the Thursday uh, night. Uh, we have men's camp out going on, I think, on the Friday. There's a luncheon. There's a 5K race. It's, it's, it's all kind of stuff that's going to be going on. I think I even saw a softball tournament. I know a lot of you have been wondering, man, when we're going to get back to softball. I did not ask that at all when we was going to get back to softball. But uh, <laughs> I'm playing this year. I'm telling you. I, I can't hit a ball, but I'm playing. Who's going to play with the softball tournament? Three of y'all, I could beat all three of y'all that raised y'all hand. I could. <laughs> all right, but this is the thing. Man, go to the website, man. All the information is there. And, man, we're going to have a good time as Israel, as the nation, as all the Hebrews come together to celebrate one of our major feast days, the Feast of Tabernacles. All right, guys, I think that's everything that I have. Um, as always, man, just be open. Have your heart open to receive what God is getting ready to tell you. Um, as we get ready to go into the Word, man, try to block out everything that would try to hinder you from hearing what God has for you. I need this is what, what's getting ready to happen is very, very important. So I really need you to go on and grasp hold. And if the Most High have dropped something inside your spirit, don't be afraid to share it uh, in our post show. Amen. Let's stretch forward our hands and pray a blessing on the offering. Most High God, we thank you again for allowing us, Lord God, to to be in a place, Lord God, that that, that your hand is on. God. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to be planted in fertile ground here in Philadelphia. God, I do ask right now, Lord God, that the tithes and offerings, Lord God, that your blessings would be upon them most high. Father, I pray, Lord God, for every person that gave today. Lord, I'm praying, Lord God, that, your, that their faith was truly ignited, God, and they put their trust in you like they, they, they should, Father. And Lord God, I pray, Lord God, just a million fold return to them, Lord God, not only financially, Lord God, but I'm praying that their health would be great, God, that no sickness would be upon them. God, I pray, Lord God, that their marriage would be great, Father. I'm praying that the children children would be, be, be in order, God. We are praying, Father, that when we obedient to you, God, you pour out your blessings upon us. Father, I do ask now, Lord God, that you continue to open doors for us as a ministry, Father, to awaken the nation of the Hebrews, God, for us to uh, truly, Father, just, just reach everyone in the world, Lord God, with your gospel. Father, we know, Lord God, that you have gave us, gave us a big mandate, and Father, we're going to do our best to do what we have to do for your glory. So, Father, we thank you again, and we bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Y'all ready for the word? Are y'all ready for the word? Put your hands together. Help me welcome Bishop Omar Tebo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How y'all doing this morning? Praise God, y'all. Hallelujah. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Glory to God. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. And like they said, y'all, for the announcements, we got, we got a bunch of things going on. And, and uh, you can avail yourself to some great things, great spiritual things to help you grow, to help your children grow, your family grow. You know, like Minister said, go ahead and, and try to make it to those uh, 
uh, uh, we used to call it Sunday school, but discipleship training classes. Amen. That's going to bless you. It's going to bless you. Glory to God. Remember Bible study this week coming up Tuesday. We meeting also in Dallas and in Atlanta. Amen. Come on, give God some glory for that. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> glory to the Most High. Amen. And so the month of August looks great, y'all. It looks great with the men's meeting and karaoke night. And so let's go ahead and have a good time. Amen. And moving into tabernacles. Amen. Anybody excited about tabernacles? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And we're going to have people coming from all over the country again, amen, just to visit. And this is going to be our first time kind of doing tabernacles, amen. We did Passover. It was great. Now we're kind of expanding the tabernacles, amen. And so we want you all to be a part of that, amen. And we're going to have some athletic events, and that should be fun, amen. Whether people do good or people do bad, we're still going to laugh about it, amen. Anybody hear me up in here? Glory to God. And so it's going to be all about, amen, fitness and getting in shape and taking care of our earthly tabernacles because that's what our people need. Come on, give y'all some praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. So I'm excited, man. In October, October shouldn't be as hot as we've been experiencing in August. Amen. And so we praise God for that. Amen. Because let me tell you, ooh, that summer is cutting up. Amen. Glory to God, and it's warm out here. We was in Dallas, and if you think it's hot in Louisiana, ooh, Dallas is really hot. First lady said the gates of hell must be right under Dallas, because it was, it was hot. They, she said it must have a door under Dallas, amen? Hallelujah, if they got a door under Dallas, they got a window under Lafayette, because let me tell you, ooh, but it's hot, man. And so look, we got all kind of stuff going on, amen? And so we uh, want you to participate in that, hallelujah as we fulfill our mandate to awaken our people, amen, and to build us into one, amen, and to give God the glory for everything that he's doing, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. First Lady, I think that's all the announcements. Anything else we got going on? Hallelujah, I think that may be it, amen. And so um, we're going we're gonna to turn to John chapter 18, uh, verse 10, and we're going to kind of get going, amen, and Ryan and, and the team did wonderful today. Come on, give God some glory for that. Amen. And uh, we're going to move into the message. And, and uh, TP, can you give me my sermon prop for, the, for, the, for this morning? Amen. If you could just give me that. Hallelujah. So a lot been going on this week. And we, uh, we're going to be talking about some things. And, you know, it's always good to just have a nice chat every now and then. You know, just... Hallelujah. So we're going to be going in, amen, about some things. We're going to talk about some things this morning. And, you know, I just needed a little bit of help in the sermon, you know. Come on, somebody. So hallelujah, glory to God. You know, sometimes you got to stand together. Anybody hear me up in here? Sometimes you got you to gotta show the world that <laughs> we care about one another, amen. And, Sometimes it's just, it's just good to let them all know that we, we're not alone out there, amen, and hallelujah. For those that don't know, man, in Alabama, amen, they tried to jump on an elderly black man, amen, and, and boy, black people all over the world, boy, started, they was coming from everywhere. The Hebrews was dropping out the sky. I thought I was watching Avengers in game. The ball was jumping out. Woo! Ah, they were swimming. They was running. And one fella pull out a chair. I ain't never seen no fella work a chair like that. Woo! But they all did what they were supposed to do to take care of one another. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. And they said that, hallelujah, that, that it was something different that had happened that day. Something in the spirit that had shifted. Because normally growing up and normally even going back to slavery, one of us would get in trouble, that would just be one of us got in trouble. We really wouldn't stand up for one another. And it was, it was something to stand up for your brother or your sister, but to see strangers jumping in the water, swimming across, to come to the aid of another Hebrew, another Israelite, another black person, like, we not gonna let this go down like that again. We done seen enough. We done heard enough. Ha. 
not on my watch. They're not choking another one in the subway. Not on my watch. They're not putting a knee on another one's neck. Not on my watch. That's just not going to happen on my watch. And so it was a, it was a move. It was a move. And I'm, I'm telling you, whether you believe it or not, something different is happening in us. Something different is happening in us. We are not our parents' generation. We are not our grandparents' generation. We, we not our ancestors. Judah is waking up. Anybody hear me up in here? When the, whoo, when the lion wakes up, mm, when Judah wakes up, amen, the world is going to be quite different, amen. And so I brought this prop because the sermon today, amen, is going to have a lot to do with that. We're going to talk about, amen, um, theology and violence. We're going to talk about theology and violence. And we want to cut it right, all right? We don't ever want to be a violent people, amen? But as we'll see, there's a time for everything under the sun. Anybody hear me up in here? So, so we're going to talk about it, not in, a, not in a militant and let's go storm the Capitol January 6th type way. We're not going to talk about it like that. But we're going to just get an accurate scripture cutting on. Because we got a school that say, hallelujah, absolutely, never, ever, do any type of harm to any person, even if they're breaking in your house and beating on your wife and taking advantage of your daughter, amen, they're like, oh, well, God's just going to take care of it. There's some that believe that strong. they pacifists. And then you got some way on the other side. They, 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 they wake up ready. They, they, <laughs> they, want, they want to do it right now. But we have to always ask the question, where is God in all of this? And where does God want his people? And have we, as a church, as Christendom, have we cut this thing right? Because I don't know, sometimes it seems like we're the only ones that's nonviolent. Sometimes it seems like they're preaching, preaching a European Christianity that tell us don't touch them, but they're always touching us. And, and, and I just, I just want to cut it straight. I want to cut it right. I want to know what the Bible says about that so that we could be on the right side of God, so we could be on the right side of history, so we could be ready if God would ever need us to wake up the sleeping lion again. Come on, give y'all some praise up in this place. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So Father, make us one, God, as we look at your word, amen. And we just praise God, hallelujah. Brother Carl, pass that chair around, amen, let's do it. Let's do a wave with that chair. God, whoever touches this chair, let it be a unity movement. Let the anointing of unity be on it in Jesus' name. Come on, just pass that around. Amen. Pass that around. Holly. <laughs> pass that around. Let somebody touch that. Come on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. And Brother Carl, give it, give it to somebody. They're going to pass that like the children pass that. They, they know how to pass that. How you, hallelujah. Let's look at John, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's look at John. We'll go to chapter 18, verse 7, amen. And we'll start reading. Glory to God. Uh, the Bible says, uh, Then asked he them again, Whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore ye seek me, let these go their way, that the saying might be fulfilled which he spake. Of them which thou gavest me have I lost none. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it, and smote the high priest's servant, and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Then said Jesus unto Peter, Put up thy sword into, thy sheath, into the sheath, the cup which my father had given me, Shall I not drink it? Most high, we thank you for your word. We give you praise for not just some of scripture, but all of scripture. 
And so as we, hallelujah, allow ourselves, God, to be caught up in your word, your way, your spirit, God, fill us up to the overflow like the worship team said. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear what the spirit is saying to the church. We bind out flesh. We bind out the world. We bind out the devil, God. We pray that you would close us in unto yourself. Not let anything bad come in to harm us, hurt us, to distract us, but help us sit at your feet, God, like Mary, and learn from this one needful thing. And Father, we pray that you would, of course, save souls, but edify your saints as well, and keep us, O King, and bless us to continue in this movement of unity with your people, God, your Hebrews, God, but also all those that love you and call your name, no matter what color, creed, ethnicity they are, God. Bless us to be on the right side, the God side. In Yahshua, Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, give him some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Saints of God, last time we were here, amen, we talked about the Pharisees. And we got a, we got a little too deep last time, amen. Uh, we got so deep, amen, we had to pull the sermon from YouTube, amen. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, I told y'all I was going to get in trouble for this, amen. And I sure did, amen. Hallelujah. Uh, 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 like, I, like I told the minister team and I told First Lady, hallelujah, they, they touched us, amen. They let us know that they was listening. So they, they, touched, they touched my family. They touched me and First Lady, and it was good. It's good. And in the spirit, amen, uh, uh, I heard that, that, that Whitney Houston clip, amen, when she said, you better lay low. You know she said like that? Yeah, I heard that in the spirit, amen. So we pulled a sermon. We pulled from uh, YouTube. We, we even pulled it from Facebook, amen. And immediately when we pulled it, the touch was removed, amen. And so, uh, so we understand. What's understood don't need to be said, amen. And, uh, and uh, a time's going to come when we're going to be able to say what we want, but that time is not quite yet. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so we're going we gonna to keep on moving. Amen. We ain't going to talk about Edom too much. We're going to talk about us today. Amen. And we're going to go, go in. Hallelujah. Um, um, and so maybe later on we'll see uh, uh, when things cool down. Amen. If we could put that. You know when it's hot, hot in the streets? Remember who used to be in the streets? When it was hot? <laughs> It's hot out there. You better stay inside. <laughs> Play the game. It's hot. It's hot in the streets. And so right now, we're going we gonna to just chill. We done put too much truth out there. Amen. And, uh, and they done touched us. They done touched us. And so it's, it's, it's all good. We're going we gonna to be all right. We're going to be all right. We're going to be all right. And so it's all good. And so we're going to move on this morning. And so this morning, we're going to continue in our text of chapter 18. And we're going to look specifically at verses 10 and verse 11. And it's going to be a seamless sermon, but for those that have to have structure while they listen to a sermon, I'm going to be moving through about four different areas. I'm going to talk about the story, uh, Peter's wrong. I'm going to talk about a time for war, and then we're going to relate that to Judah. Sambut, I think I got that outline for you. If you can get to that, amen. Hallelujah, there it is. The story, Peter's wrong, a time for war, and Judah, amen. And so that's what we're going to be talking about. And remember, the title of this message is Peter's Sword, Theology and Violence. How does it all fit together in the context of Scripture, Sola Scriptura, our Bible, from cover to cover, how does it look? And it's going to be important for us not to just pick a deal of the Bible, choose where we want to believe. We got to believe and see what the whole Bible, amen, doing a, a, a survey of Scripture, what the Bible teaches us about violence, about putting our hands on people, about when it's time, amen, to defend others or to defend ourselves. And so we want to get a good scriptural analysis of that. So let's look at our first point. Let's talk about the story, amen. In our text before us, Hallelujah. Uh, we see that the Roman soldiers are approaching Jesus. The Roman soldiers with the Hebrew servants, if you remember, from the temple, they are attempting to arrest Jesus. Now, Jesus in verses 7 through 9, he asked them, who y'all looking for? All right. Who you looking for? They answer him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus says, I'm the one you want. All right. And he said, I'm the one you want. Let these go free. All right. And Jesus is doing this for two reasons, y'all. 
Number one, to fulfill the scriptures. It was prophesied that of all those that Jesus had gathered, his disciples, that he would not lose a single one. All right. And so Jesus was turning himself in. He was saying, listen, I want my boys to be good. I want the disciples to be good. I'm going to turn myself in. No violence. This is actually a surrender deal. This is what it is. And so Jesus says, I am he. All right. But secondly, Jesus turned himself in when they come because he wants them to go free. For what reason? To propagate the gospel. All right. If the soldiers come in and it's a battle, it's a skirmish. Hallelujah. Maybe just maybe. Huh? All the disciples would get killed. Now, who would be able to write the gospel of Matthew, write the gospel of Mark, write the gospel of, of, of John? All right. And so Jesus is saying, listen, I need them to be witnesses. So as the Romans are approaching, Jesus said, who y'all looking for? Jesus of Nazareth. I'm he, Jesus is saying. And that's what it's all about. But Peter in the story has a sword, y'all. All right. Look at your neighbor and say, oh, Lord. All right, Peter has a sword, all right? And, and you'll find out that Peter is about that life, okay? He really is. They, they just got Hebrews like that. They just be about that life, all right? He not scared at all. And we know they have a sword because in Luke twenty two thirty eight, 38, the Bible says, and they said, Lord, behold, here are two swords. And he said unto them, it is enough. So we knew that they were strapped. That's what we're saying. The disciples were strapped. They had, they had swords, all right? And Peter, when they was coming to get Jesus, Peter was saying to himself, it's not about to go down like that, all right? We often focus on Peter's denial, all right? But something happened before the denial. Don't you ever think that Peter was scared, all right? In Matthew 26, 35, Peter told Jesus, he says, though I should die with thee, Huh? Yet will I not deny thee. So that was Peter's heart. He was like, Lord, we all going to die today. It's all good. Okay? That was Peter's heart. Hallelujah. So in verse 10, when they had surrounded Jesus, looking at John 18, 10, the Bible says, Then Simon Peter, having a sword, he drew it. I told y'all, Peter was about that life. All right? He drew it, and he smote the high priest's servant. That means that he, he, he swung, he, he cut the high priest's servant. And the Bible says he cut off his right ear, not his left ear, his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Now what you need to know, church, is that Peter was not aiming at the man's ear. All right? Nobody is aiming at people's ear when they swing a sword. All right? Pastor, what was Peter trying to do? Peter was trying to give Malchus a permanent part, right down the middle. Like we say in the street, he was trying both to split his wig, yep. He was trying to cut him right down the middle. That's what Peter was trying to do, uh huh? But the sovereignty of God and the overwhelming, overruling providence of the Most High allowed Peter's hand to move a little bit left. Just an angel, just a wind blew in. And Peter went, whoop, and caught his ear instead of splitting his wig. Yes, All right? And that's how that went down. And, and hallelujah, hallelujah. And the Bible says in the next verse, we talk about the story, and uh, the Bible says in Luke twenty two fifty. look what it says. And one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. Now watch what Jesus do. Jesus didn't approve of Peter's uh, 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 method at that moment. And so in verse 51, Jesus answered and said, suffer ye thus far. And what Jesus is saying, allow this to happen. Allow this to go down. It's all a part of the plan. This ain't happening because I can't do nothing about it. All right? I'm allowing this to happen. Peter, please, you allow this to happen too. And the Bible says, and Jesus touched Malchus' ear and healed him. Now, I wish I would have been there to see that. All right? Because Jesus didn't pierce the boy's ear. I mean, uh, Peter didn't pierce the boy's ear, no. The Bible said he chopped his ear off. I'm talking about ear on the ground. Ear down. Anybody hear me up in here? Anybody hear me? <laughs> he couldn't hear me. <laughs> ear down. And the Bible said Jesus touched his ear. Now, I don't know if Jesus touched the ear that was on the ground or the one that was still attached to his head. I don't know if Jesus, I'm just trying to imagine it. 
The ear is down. It's down there. I don't know if Jesus picked up the ear and just touched Malchus on the side of the face and then removed his hand and ear back on. You understand what I'm saying? Ear back on. He look at Malchus. Can you hear me now? <laughs> I can say, I can not only hear you, I'm catching, I'm catching, I'm catching HBO, I'm catching Showtime. Oh, the game on. Get that boy Kip a brand new ear. All right, all right. And so he either, he either picked up the old ear, put it on, or, or just touch where the old ear used to be, and just a new ear just pop out of it. You know? Now, if that's the case, if that boy got a new ear and that old ear still on the ground, I'm picking up my old ear and I'm bringing it home. I'm going to put it in a case and I'm going to show the world. This was my ear. You know, that would have changed my life. So that's the, that's what happened. Homeboy did not leave like Peter had just cut off his ear. Because Jesus didn't approve of Peter's method at that time in the garden. So let's move on to our second point. Let's discuss why Peter was wrong to pull out his sword in the garden. Let's just discuss that. Because when we get a good understanding about it, we're going to understand theology and violence. Sometimes we think above what's written. But let's just think about why Peter was wrong in this situation. A, Peter was wrong in this situation because Christ never gave the go-ahead. He never gave the go-ahead. All right? And as people with a king, we got to know how to follow instructions. All right? We got to know how to follow instructions. Because some people think that you could just do anything at any time. In the kingdom, we don't belong to ourselves. Anybody hear me up in here? We move when the king moves. That's why a lot of people get out of order. Because they ain't moving with the king. And so right here, Peter does that. And in Luke twenty-two forty-nine. 49... We see it all played out in the Synoptic Gospels. The Bible says, but Jesus said unto him, Judas, betrayest thou the son of man with a kiss? When they which were around him saw what would follow, the disciples saw what was going down, they said unto him, Lord, shall we smite with the sword? The other translations say they asked Jesus, Lord, should we fight? They were ready to do it. They was ready to do it, especially Peter. Lord, shall we smite with the sword? Verse 50. Now, Luke don't give the name who cut the ear off. Luke trying to cover his brother. Luke don't want the authorities as he put out his gospel to come and get Peter. So Luke say, ain't no rats around here. I, I ain't getting involved in that. So Luke say, and one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. But you got to see between 49 and 50 what happened. They ask Jesus, should we smite with the sword? Should we fight? Jesus don't answer. Because Peter don't need an answer. All right? They say, should we smite with the sword? Peter goes, shoot. Cut that boy ear right off. Why was Peter wrong? Peter didn't wait for an answer. He took it upon his own self. Jesus did not give the go ahead. Come on, give y'all some praise up in here. All right? Why else was Peter wrong? Peter broke the surrender deal that Jesus had just worked out. All right? Keep moving, sound boot, if you can. Peter broke the surrender deal that Jesus had just worked out. Keep on going. Keep on going. You're almost there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A little bit, little bit, little bit more. Glory to God. You'll see it then. Oh, not yet, not yet. Keep on going. It's under, it's under 2B. Peter broke the surrender deal that Jesus had just worked out. Remember in our text, there it is, the text before us, Jesus' main concern was that his disciples would be able to escape. That was his main concern. He wanted them to escape so that they could witness to the world about the glorious wonders of the cross. He didn't want all his disciples to die in that garden. And so in John 8, 18, 8, Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. Y'all looking for Jesus. I told y'all that I am he. If therefore ye seek me, let these go their way, Jesus said. This is the surrender deal. I will surrender and come with you peacefully, but you're going to have to let my, my dogs go free. All right? You see it there? 
That's what he wants to do. Well, when Peter tried to split the man's head in two, Peter was inadvertently breaking the surrender deal. And all hell could have break loose. All right? A battle could have ensued. I told you all last time that that was a whole little company of Roman soldiers that was with Judas. It probably was about two to three hundred of them. All heavenly armored with their Roman helmets, Roman breastplates, Roman shields, Roman swords, huh? Anything could have happened. So it was a possibility if Peter would have killed Malchus in that garden, it was a strong possibility that all the disciples would have died. All right? There was also another possibility that Jesus would have went Book of Revelation and all of the Roman Empire would have died. Anybody here? Did y'all catch that? Not the Roman soldiers. He would have killed all the Roman Empire. All right? Because he told, he told Peter, he said, he said, don't you know I can call 12 legions of angels right here tonight if I don't want to get caught, if I don't want to be arrested? Huh? And then if Jesus would have killed off the whole Roman Empire, he would have had to redo the whole thing again. He'd have to put time back, be born again. Okay, let's do it again, angel. Let's do it again. All right? All right? And so Jesus had just formulated a surrender deal, terms and conditions. Y'all can take me peacefully, but let my dogs go free. All right? And there come Peter. Ah! All right? You could have broke the deal, so Peter was wrong. Peter was also wrong, see, because he was trying to stop the cross. He was trying to stop the cross. See, Jesus had to be arrested so he could be crucified. He had to be crucified so he could die. He had to die so that our sins could be forgiven. Anybody hear me up in here? All right? All right? And that's what had to happen. Because without the shedding of blood, there could be no remission of sins. He's the sacrifice. He's the Lamb of God that would take away what? The sins of the world. And that could only happen through his death, his burial, and his resurrection. You can't have no sacrifice that don't shed no blood. All right? And so Jesus had to do that. So when Peter jumped in the way and tried to start this fight, the final and most important reason why Peter was wrong is because he put the cross in jeopardy. He put the cross in jeopardy. If things would have went like Peter would have wanted, we wouldn't be in here today. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? All right? The cross had to happen. Because if Jesus is not dead, then we all still in our sins. All right? That should be, that, that, somebody need a shot. All right? In Matthew 16, 21, we see that Peter had a knack for trying to stop Jesus from suffering. He never wanted Jesus to suffer. And the last thing Peter wanted was that Jesus suffer and leave him. Peter had a little bit of selfishness in him. He had met Christ, rolled with Christ for those three years, and he had loved Christ. And how many people know that we could be a little selfish even in spiritual things? He with Jesus, he ain't got to worry about no food. He ain't got to worry about no water, no clothing. He ain't got to worry about nothing. And if somebody gets sick, guess what? Jesus going to just heal him. Peter like, man, we could live forever. <laughs> we see him in the Mount of Transfiguration, hallelujah. Let's build a tabernacle. Let's just stay here, Jesus. Peter was a little selfish with Jesus. And sometimes we can get a little spiritually selfish as well. And sometimes, amen, we got to understand, hallelujah, that sometimes God got different plans than us. And sometimes we got to let people go. We got to let things go to benefit not just us, but everybody else. Come on, give y'all some praise up in here. And so, hallelujah. And so in Matthew 16, 21, we see from that time forth, Jesus began, this is early in the gospel, to show unto his disciples. What are you showing them? He's prophesying to them. That what? How that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders, chief priests, scribes, and do what? And be killed. He's telling them this before it happened. But he was telling them that he was not only going to be killed, but watch this, that he was going to be what? Raised up. On the third day. All right. He's telling him it's going down. 22. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Wait up, Peter. You, you overstepping your boundary, baby. This is above your pay grade. How you going to rebuke Jesus? 
And then you're rebuking Jesus about something you know nothing about. This is about the cross. The man trying to save you from sin and you rebuking him? Boy, you got your priorities mixed up. All right? But he was thinking selfishly. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But Jesus turned and said unto Peter, because Jesus saw, hallelujah, the, the spirit that was behind Peter. He said, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest, thou care about, thou, you don't have in mind the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Come on, give God some glory for that. Huh? He was telling Peter, Peter, you just thinking from a manly perspective. You just thinking from an earthly perspective. You just thinking selfishly. You don't have the things of God in your mind. And it ain't just you thinking like that, Peter. Is Satan got you thinking like that. So devil, get thee behind me, Jesus says. And that's the way that goes. And so Peter was wrong for trying to stop Christ from suffering, stop Christ from dying. Jesus tells him in 1811, then said Jesus unto Peter, put up thy sword into the sheath. The cup which my father had given me, shall I not drink it? And what Jesus was saying was this. Peter, this is the reason I was born, cat. I was born to die for the world. I'm the lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. The lamb crucified before the foundation of the earth. Huh? He was born to die for our sins. Come on, give y'all some praise. All right? Jesus would tell him later on, thinkest thou not that I cannot pray to my father and he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels. But Jesus says in 26 of Matthew 54, but how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled that thus it must be so? Peter, this is a part of the plan. You was wrong for trying to stop the cross, All right? God bless the truth. So this is the story, and this is why Peter was wrong. Now, some people would look at this and say Peter was wrong for pulling out his sword because it was violence, and all violence is wrong. And I want to tell you, that couldn't be further from the truth. Our Bible don't teach that violence is wrong. Violence in the wrong way. Violence with the wrong motive, violence against innocence, violence against people, amen, like you're in your house, against your wife, against your children. Yeah, that's all wrong. But just to put a blanket statement and just say that all violence is wrong because the Bible teaches that, I would say you better open up the book of Genesis and read all the way through Revelation again. All right? All right? This story does not mean that all violence is wrong. And so let's look at it now. We done looked at the story, why Peter was wrong. huh? Now let's look at our third point, a time for war. A time for war. All right? And you can know where I'm going a little bit. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, it says, To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. And what God is saying in his word right here, y'all, is that there's a time for everything. There's a time for everything. As we move to verse 2, keep it in the King James, he says there's a time to be born. But unfortunately, there is also a time to what? A time to die. There's a, there's a time to plant. huh? And that's a beautiful thing. You're planting your rose bush. huh? But there's also a time to what? Pluck up what is planted. Look what the Bible says. There's even a time, hallelujah, glory to God, they, they caught up with me. There's a, go, now, go, to, go to verse 8. We're going to cut straight to it. Go to 3 and 8. The Bible says there's a time to love and there is a time to hate. There's a time of war and there's a time of peace. You see, for us to say that all violence is wrong, all war is wrong, is really us being unbiblical. Because God is telling us, no, there is a time for war. There is a time for it. We think there's a time, we think that peace is all, is, is all like, like, like peace going to reign forever. It, like, like we just going to have peace right now before Christ come back. That's not the way it goes. It's not the way it goes. 
Sometimes only, on, the only way peace can come is through war. <laughs> oh, hear me up in here. So let's just get a good biblical understanding, amen, of, of, of violence. The Bible not only said there's a time for war and a time for peace. Watch 8.3. Oh, this is going to shake y'all Christians up. Huh? Look, look what he's saying in 8.3. Hallelujah. 3.3, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, three, three, rather. Look at 3.3. Three. Look what he says. We're going to wait on him. There's a time to even kill, and there's a time to heal. There's a time to break down, and there's a time to build up. Do you see what God is saying here? Amen. And y'all was sitting there thinking that all violence is wrong, that all war is wrong. Let me tell you, you just drunk the Edomite Kool-Aid, and you done turned your cup all the way to the bottom. Huh? Bottoms up. Huh? Because they got everybody nonviolent but themselves. Woo! Woo! Yeah, 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 yeah. You see, some people think, and believers think, that any time war happens, any time violence happens, that is wrong. And it's of the devil. But that's not what we read in the Bible. Huh? There are times in our Bible where God has commanded violence. He's commanded it. And there's times in our Bible where he's commended violence, like saying, good job. All right, you did that. All right? Let me give y'all some examples, since y'all kind of uncomfortable with this message. All right? In Genesis chapter 14, Abraham went to war to rescue his nephew Lot, who was taken by the kings huh, of the Aryan. Abraham went to war, did such a good job defeating the enemies that a personage by the name of Melchizedek, the king of righteousness by interpretation, who some people believe to be a theophany, which is a, a pre-incarnate version of Yahshua Christ himself, and that's what I believe, all right? Because Melchizedek is the king of righteousness. Ain't no king of righteousness but my God. Ain't no king of righteousness but Jesus, the king of kings and lord of lords. Anybody hear me up in here? Melchizedek, meaning king of righteousness, he was the king of Salem, which means the king of peace. All right? Ain't nobody the king of priests or the peace or the prince of peace, but God the Father and God the Son. They talk of Melchizedek having no beginning and no end, no earthly father, no earthly mother. And if you can't see that Melchizedek is the theophany, then you ain't reading your Bible right. Well, after Abraham goes to war, the Bible says that Melchizedek comes and blesses Abraham. Blesses him for what? For going to war, for saving Lot, for taking care of the business of the Most High God. He blesses Abraham. Uh -huh. and that's an example where war was commended by God. What about when God helped Israel in Exodus chapter 17? Y'all know the story. And the Bible says that the Amalekites came to fight with uh, 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 Israel. We was coming out of Egypt. We was just coming out of Egypt. The Amalekites start attacking the rear guard of Israel, the women and the elderly people. Moses pulled Joshua out of there and said, listen, we don't want to fight, but they fighting us. And that's usually when it's a time to fight, when you ain't picked for no fight. But somebody hurting, amen, the less fortunate among us, the elderly among us. Oh, God, sound like Alabama Riverfront. Anybody hear me up in here? Somebody knew what the Spirit of God was telling them. And as we watched that, did anybody feel the Holy Spirit? And you watch that, you see, oh, I'm getting the goosebumps. I'm feeling the Spirit. Like, but your theology, which is European, saying, why am I feeling good and feeling the Spirit for violence? It is because sometimes God approves violence. Oh, God. Y'all like, especially when it comes to the defense of others and somebody hurting the elderly and somebody hurting women and children. That's, that's what was going on with the Amalekites attacking Israel when we, when we was leaving Egypt the first time. God told Moses, get Joshua out of there. Rally up a little team of headhunters and let's go do these boys something. All right? And if you don't remember the story about me breaking it down and he bonnets, you're going to remember this. Moses was in the mountain. And when Moses had his hands up, 
praying and worshiping and praising God. Connected to the Most High God. Israel had victory in the valley. When Moses' hands went down and Moses wasn't connected, wasn't praying, wasn't praising, wasn't worshiping, huh? 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 They was losing in the battlefield. What does this show, huh? That God was giving Israel the victory in battle. He was commanding and commanding the war to take place. It was so bad that when Moses' arms got heavy, huh? Hallelujah. Moses' two men, huh? Hallelujah. And in there, get up under that. And help Moses' hands stay up so that Israel could have victory in the battle. And you're going to come tell me that God don't command or command violence at some point? No, 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 no. You got to really read your Bible. It got so bad that God felt some kind of way about the Amalekites so bad. Exodus 17, 16, God said this, because the Lord had sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek, from generation to generation. What we don't know is, is that a part of our God is, our God is not only a savior. Our God is not only preeminent in making peace, where peace can be. He's, he's the king of peace. He's the prince of peace. But you see, like us, we only good at one thing. God not good at one thing. God good at everything. All right? So while he can make a perfect heaven in bliss, in perfect heaven, in, in paradise, in everything that you would want, God still has a personality that can make a perfect hell. Perfect in torture, torment, and suffering. And because of your limited, finite humanity, you can't see yourself being good, huh, at blessing and at hurting. But God is. And that's why the Bible says, oh, huh? The, the mercy and the severity of our God. That's why the Bible says, is, listen, listen, Paul say, I persuade men. Huh? Why? Because it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. All right? And God gave us a choice in these last days. Back then, they didn't have a choice which side they was going to get. Now we have a choice. God said, I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. God coming up to us and saying, which side of me do you want? Oh, my God. Because you could get it how you're living, well, however you want it. God saying, I'm, I'm ready to give it. And listen, let me tell you something. And some people sitting in here saying, well, that's the Old Testament God. God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. <laughs> He's the God that change it not. He's the immutable God. The one you saw in Genesis is the one you going to see again at the end of Revelation. I promise you that. All right? All right? And so he's a God of perfect peace, but what the world will understand is that he is the God of war. He is the God of war. No Apollo, no mythological God is the God of war. Not only perfect in making peace, but he's perfect in making war. Can I tell you that he's never lost a battle? Hey! <laughs> How you know he's the God of war? He's telling boys all the time, the battle is the Lord's. That's a God of war that would say that. But we done forgot our God. We done let some other people teach us about our God. But us Hebrews deep inside, you know, hallelujah, because real recognize real, you know what I'm talking about, about God is what is true, is fact. Because one thing the Hebrews know, don't play with God. All right? Because we know that he could go either way like that. And it ain't no big deal, you see? And, and so in Exodus 17, he said, listen, I'm going to have perpetual war with Amalek. I'm going to take care of them from generation to generation. And that's why God would sanction war in the Old Testament. That's, why, that's what happened with Agag when he told him, he said, come on. He said, he said children of Israel, y'all run through that. Don't spare nobody. All right? And I took you to Jasher to show you the history of that, how they wasn't supposed to be in that land anyway, how they rebelled against Noah, they rebelled against Japheth, they rebelled against Shem. They was jacking land that didn't belong to them anyway. They gave them the warning and get out of that because some people coming out of Egypt and that land belonged to them. Huh? But they didn't take heed, all right? How many people know that before destruction, warning always comes? All right? That's the good God that we serve. But we look at God, we say, man, why, God, why you destroy all those people? God, like, baby, please. I told them people 300 years to get up and get this stuff out of there. 
And finally, when I come and evict them, y'all saying that I'm wrong? Oh, no, get your stuff and leave. You see? You see? There's no wrong in our God. And if we find wrong, huh? Huh? The wrong is in us. Come on, give y'all some praise. Amen? So we're talking about a time, a time for war. Huh? We look at Exodus and we saw it. Oh, God, if you look at the whole book of Joshua, the book of Joshua is a history of military campaigns. It's just Israel going one battle after another. I can prove it to you. The first battle is the battle of Jericho. <laughs> when God tells his people, look, I need y'all to march around this city seven times. I need y'all to blow the trumpet. And then when y'all blow it on the seventh time, the wall's going to come down. I need y'all to go in there and take care of some business. The God of war. The God of war. If God did not command or commend violence, then Jericho would have never happened. You see? Are y'all seeing what type of God that you serve? When you understand it completely, you're going to understand how beautiful the gospel is. You're going to understand how beautiful his mercy is. Amen. See, if you believe the European model of God, the Easter Bunny, uh, 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 Santa Claus, fairy godmother version of God, that he could hurt nobody, then the gospel not going to be sweet to you. See, the gospel is sweet because it's two sides. It's two sides. Because the same God that laid Jericho's, Jericho walls flat gave an opportunity for a woman by the name of Rahab to put a red thread out her window. And when destruction came, when they saw the red thread, ha, destruction passed over her house and everybody who was in her house. And Rahab didn't have to be perfect. She was a harlot. She was a street woman. She was a woman that was standing at the corner. But listen, though you not perfect, if you get under the scarlet thread, ha, if you get under the blood of Jesus, he was preaching mercy even when he was going to war. And Rahab the harlot, huh? And everybody who was in our house under the scarlet thread, was spared, was saved. Huh? What an amazing testimony of the gospel. Way back in the book of Joshua. And not only saved, but when you look up the genealogy of Jesus, woo, and you go back to David, you go back to Jesse, you go back to Obed, you go back to Ruth and Boaz, but even before Ruth and Boaz, huh, in the genealogy of Jesus was an old lady, a harlot by the name of Rahab, who didn't even belong, but the blood, anybody hear me up in here, was not only able to save, but to make her a great, great, great grandmother of Yahshua HaMashiach. Oh, the mercy and the severity of our God. Huh? And it be on us which one we want. Oh, yeah, there is a time for war in the book of Judges. As we look at the book of Judges, the book of Judges is all about battle. It's all about our people. Kind of in the situation we're in right now. Losing our way. Every man doing what's right in his own eyes. And God, because of us not fulfilling our covenant with him, God allowing us to go into oppression, into captivity, into poverty. Huh? Why? Because Deuteronomy told us that the blessing was in obedience, but the curse was in disobedience. If we would obey, we would be the head and not the tail. We'd be above and not beneath. We'd be the lender and not the borrower. But if we would disobey, the tell we would be indeed. The borrower we would be indeed. The stranger in our neighborhoods would be over us indeed. The acts of disobedience. In the book of Judges, like we find ourselves in our modern Egypt 2.0 in America, the book of Judges show that when the people of God, even in their disobedience, when they would open their mouths and open their hearts and call upon their God, he would have mercy upon them. Oh, God bless the truth. Come on, give y'all some praise up in here. 
And the book of Judges is just us falling in sin, getting oppressed, and then God sending a judge. Some of the judges would include people that y'all would know. Gideon, Samson, Deborah and Barak, Ehud, Othaniel, all right? And when these judges would come through, they would have to break the oppression off of our people. Because oppression sometimes has to be broken. Othanel, Judges 3.10 says this, And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he judged Israel, and went out to war. What did the Spirit of the Lord give Othanel? What did it do for him? It allowed him to judge Israel and to go to war. You see it there in the scripture? I wonder if we remember who our God is. You see? And the Lord delivered, and that's a big name, huh? We're going to just call him Cush. The Lord delivered Cush, king of Mesopotamia, into the hands, into his hands, and his hand prevailed against Cush. Ehud, the same way, took a dagger, took care of the king of Moab. Gideon defeated the Midianites, whose army was like the sand of the seashore in the valley. And how many did Gideon, did God use with Gideon to defeat the Midianites? Anybody remember? 300. Yeah. And y'all think that movie was about Europeans. <laughs> that was our story. <laughs> yeah. God took 300 Hebrews and defeated an innumerable Midianite army. Huh? Yeah. God not only commanded and commended, but gave the power for us to have victory in that battle. All right? What about David, Joe? We're talking about theology and violence. Where does God see it? And when is it ever justified? Is this helping anybody out in here? All right? All right? All right? What about David? How was David called a man after God's own heart? But at the same time, later, they would call him a man of war. David would be up in there worshiping like bride on Sunday. You see how bride be getting down? Lord, you mighty. Oh, 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 oh. Huh? But you play with David after worship. You play with David after worship. I hope I'm not giving Brian real personality away. You play with Brian after worship. All right? How could somebody be a worshiper and a warrior? Huh? Huh? How could somebody be a praise leader? Huh? And put them hands on you? Huh? Because that's what David would say in Psalm 144. He said, Lord, teach my hands to war and my fingers to fight. David said, I'm going to beat you with my fingers. <laughs> All right? All right? Look at this David that, that we... That we that we praise God for. Look at this best king of Israel. Look at the one that Jesus would be called the son of David. Let's look at him in action. In 1 Samuel 17, 51. Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of the sheet thereof and slew Goliath and cut off his head Therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champions dead, they fled. Come on, give y'all some praise up in here. Oh, somebody for the first time, they say, What kind of church am I in? A church of the truth. A church of the truth. A church that's going to teach you when they run up in yours, don't you be up in there not protecting your wife and your children. I'm a Christian. Have her take anything. <laughs> when they run up in yours, tell them, you better know Jesus. You, are, you, better, you better know Jesus. Because I do. <laughs> Somebody say, we not our ancestors. Yeah, 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 you got to get back to your book. You got to get back to your book. And you got to understand your book. Not the parts that they taught us, but the whole thing. You, you understand what I'm saying? 
a man that's going to allow that to go down with his children and his wives, I'm going to show you, God's going to call you a coward. God's going to say you're not worthy. You see? You see what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. That, 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 that's, not, that's, not, that's not it. That's not it. You see? You see? We done drunk the Kool-Aid. But I'm here to wake us up this morning. And you know in your heart that what I'm saying is right there. Where bear at? You know it. They, they come up in there. Woo! We don't call you bear for nothing, boy. His real name is Brandon Thomas. Deacon Brandon Thomas. You know what I'm saying? So, so that's David, huh? the worshiper and the warrior. And became famous for this act of violence. Yeah. They sung about him. Saul had slain his thousands. But David is ten thousand. That's how we used to act. That's how we used to act in church. <laughs> That's the thing we would praise God for. The courage of a man. All right, all right, all right. I'm just going through the Bible. The whole book of Esther is all about deliverance through violence. The whole book. How Haman was about to commit genocide against our people. I bought a car, told Esther, you can run if you want, but maybe, just maybe, you was born for such a time as this. How God flipping the script and allowing Haman to be hung on the same gallows that he had erected for us and our people in Mordecai. Huh? And how God was able, on the day they were supposed to destroy us, allow us to destroy our enemies. Then on top of that, create a whole holiday to celebrate it. Here we are celebrating Purim, and we don't even know that we're celebrating because through violence, God delivered our... Hey, my God! Woo! Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, we do not serve a nonviolent God. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm trying to teach you something. I'm trying to teach you something. Now, the, the, now, now I, I'm, I'm moving you off of pa pacifism. Now, do not go crazy when you leave this church. <laughs> See y'all downtown. It's on now. It's on now. <laughs> no, 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 no. We have to cut it right. I don't need you way over here. I need you in the middle. I need you to understand that there's a time for war. But you got to know what time it is. God got to give the go-ahead for, for you to energize yourself, protect yourself, your family, your people. All right? All right? So don't, don't be going crazy out here. See all of y'all in military fatigues next Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't you dare do that. You think them people touched me last Sunday? What they going to do to me this Sunday? All right. My God. But in Esther 8, 11, look what it says. It says, wherein the king, uh, Ahasuerus, granted the Hebrews, the Jews, the real ones, which were in every city to gather themselves together and to stand for their life, to stand up for their life, to destroy, to slay, and to cause to perish all the power of the people and province that would assault them, both little ones, women, and to take the spoil of them for prey. I got to give you that in the NIV so that you could hear what God wrought for us in the book of Esther. The king's edict, the NIV says, granted the Jews in every city the right to assemble and protect themselves to destroy, ooh, that's that word, to kill, to annihilate the armed men, not just anybody, but watch, the armed men of any nationality or province who might attack them. Are you seeing that? You seeing that? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And their women and their children, let's just move over on that, and to plunder the property of their enemies. This is what God allowed 
in the book of Esther. And this is why we celebrate Purim to this day. All right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The world treats godliness like it would never participate in violence. But sometimes violence is the godly thing to do. Especially when you're protecting your loved ones and you're protecting others. It is a misunderstanding of scripture to think that all of God's people must remain nonviolent at all times. That's not the Bible. All right? That's not the Bible. In fact, it is a misunderstanding that comes from a wrong rendering of our commandments. Exodus 20, 13, the commandment says, thou shalt not kill. So we walk around here with our Mahatma Gandhi outfit on, and we say, thou shalt not kill. But that's the English version. That word kill in the Hebrew is thou shalt not kill, because, because if that was it, you would be vegan. Because you wouldn't even be killing animals. You commandment break a church's fried chicken. You Popeye six commandment if do. You Chick fil A killer. But what does that really say in the Hebrew? That Hebrew word for kill is murder. So if we look at it in the NIV, the other translations, it really says, you shall not murder. Because killing and murder is two different things. <laughs> Pastor, what is murder? You see, I'm glad you asked. Murder, watch this, watch this. Murder is something different, huh? And the Bible said there's a time to kill, but it'll never say there's a time for murder. It's never a time for murder, all right? What is murder? Murder is the unlawful killing of a human being by another because sometimes it is lawful, all right? What is murder? It is the killing of a human being by a sane person with intent, malice, or forethought, and with no legal excuse or excuse or authority, all right? That's murder, but sometimes, when God will lead you into war or violence, the violence don't fit that definition. There is no intent, or there's no malice, or it's not premeditated, or you have a legal excuse. And we call that justifiable homicide. We call that self-defense, or we call that the defense of others. They run up on you, and David is in a situation where they're they trying to hurt. Listen, no, I'm going to hurt you before you hurt David. All right? All right? And when them people come, amen, and I explain what happened, yeah, since I'm black, they might take me in for a little while, but you know what I'm saying? But after they understand what happened, it was justifiable because I had a legal excuse. All right? All right? Or authority, meaning that sometimes you could have a position of authority that allows you that right to take life, whether you're a police officer, are you in the military? Huh? Huh? And that's why police officers and military, as in all of this stuff like that. Hallelujah. So, so when we say thou shalt not kill, understand what the Bible really is saying. Because Jericho would have never happened if that was the rendition. The book of Esther would have never happened if that was the rendition. You see? So we just need to understand our Bible a little bit better. And I want to tell you that this has all been a plan of the enemy to allow the wicked to control. Because while you got the people of God docile who not going to hurt or flee no matter what happened, they running wild doing anything and all manner of wickedness that they want. Imagine that. Imagine that. All right? It's the people of God being bamboozled again. I want y'all to look at Proverbs 24 and 10, all right? Because the same people that I tell y'all, hallelujah, nonviolent, don't ever overthrow. They started this country with an overthrow. <laughs> it's called a revolution. Anybody remember that in history? The country you're sitting in was, was because of violence. 
And then on the money, going to say, in God we trust. So how in the world is going to work for you, but it ain't going to work for me? What you trying, like, like, what you, are y'all seeing it? Okay, does it, is it clear to you? Yeah, it's only you that's not going to hurt nobody for any reason. And that's not biblical. Proverbs 24, 10, it says, if you falter in a time of trouble, how small is your strength? Rescue those being led away to death. Hold back those staggering towards slaughter. God is saying if anybody is, is, is in trouble, huh? Like, like our brother threw up his cap. <laughs> we have an obligation when we see that cap. Hebrew in trouble, like, 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 like Dora in, a, in Diego. Animal in trouble. Negro in trouble. Negro in trouble. We have an obligation. And, 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 and God is saying in the Proverbs, if you don't rise up today, you see how small your strength is. Now, now by no stretch of the imagination do you go and, and, and hurt somebody. No, you, you know, get your little chat. I lost my chat. You get your little chat. You know what I'm saying? But you allow the aggression to match the situation. All right? Don't come out there with a grenade and a bazooka. And all it is is a little skirmish. All right, you politely swim across the channel. You get up, and you show them the people your hand. All right? All right? You see? But God says in verse 12, he says, but if you say, but we knew nothing about this. If you turn your face, and you say, you knew nothing about this. Does not he who weighs the heart perceive it? Does not he who guards your life know it? Will he not repay everyone according to what they have done? He's saying, you letting innocents get beat up? You letting innocents lose their life, and you ain't doing nothing about it? He said, you don't think God's going to see that? And the one that's guarding your life, huh? He might not guard your life today because you ain't guard the life of an innocent person on yesterday. <laughs> you see the spirit behind that? Look at it again in the NLT. In, 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 in 2411, listen, I'm calling the man out of you this morning. I'm calling the woman out of you. All right, now we're going to have some women of God that's going to be able to get down and help. Miss T, you could have swim that channel and take care of some business. <laughs> but our petite women, you better video, call a cop, do what you got to do. Throw a shoe up in there, find a pipe down the street, throw it up in there, hit her assist. You know, all right. Listen, listen, look what he's saying. Hallelujah, NLT 11. Rescue those who are unjustly sentenced to die. Save them as they stagger to their death. Don't excuse yourself by saying, look, we didn't know. For God understands all hearts and he sees you. He who guards your soul knows you knew. He will repay all people as their actions deserve. God never wants us to stand by why innocents, less fortunate women and children get handled by wickedness. It's <laughs> not who he is, so it's not who he wants his people to be. When we was being handled by the devil, when he had us sin, in sin, stricken and bound, what did our God do from heaven? What did our champion do? Did he turn his head while devil was destroying our families and our country and our nation? No. The Bible says he put on his own armor, his helmet, his, his breath prayer right. He put it on his, his own armor down and came to see about us. He came to save us, yo, from our enemy. And we as the children of God, we've got to be like our God. Come on and give God some praise. You see, they don't want us to know about this in our Bible. They don't want us to focus on this. They want us to focus on scriptures like Matthew 5 and 38. And they pull out little scriptures and they pull it out and they expand whole theologies about these little scriptures. Now, I just showed you a whole Bible of what kind of God we have. 
But in Matthew 5, 38, it says, you have heard that it's been said an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. And that's true. God don't want us to be revengeful, spiteful. You know what I'm saying? As soon as somebody hits you, you hit them back. God don't want that like that. All right? All right? It's going to, you're going to, you got to show some mercy now. Somebody like, oh, yeah, you got to show some mercy now. Got to show some mercy now. Huh? Because God showed you mercy. All right? Showed you mercy. All right? He said, but I say unto you, verse 39, that you resist not evil, but whosoever will smite you, watch this, on thy right cheek, turn him also the other cheek. All right? All right? So, so what God is saying right here, all right, <laughs> Let's, we got to break this down. Don't you, don't you uh, 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 think above which is written. We've got to break this right, Brother Kent. All right? So what this telling me is, is that I can give them one lick, Montgomery. I can give them one. I can give them one, because I, I got just one right to you. Huh? He said, give my right one. Give my right one. Not, not, not. And that's the mercy of God. All right? But even with us, how many people know that mercy got a time limit? Will God mercy last forever? No, he going to judge you. He going to judge. God going to judge. So don't you come here thinking that mercy lasts forever. You can't just pummel on somebody and think that they never going to defend themselves. That's not what the scripture is saying. It's saying a cheek. All right? I'll give you one. All right? I'm going to turn to you. I'll give you that one, but, 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 but after that, that's it. After that, that's it. Look, 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 hallelujah, hallelujah. It, it say that, that you turn, hallelujah, they shall smite them the right cheek, turn them also the other. Now let me tell you what else this does not mean. It tell me to, to, to give them my cheek, not my kidney, not my heart, not my lungs, not my brain. Pastor, what you're saying? None of my vitals. You see, to hit the one cheek is a situation where my life is not in danger. Hit you my little cheek, look, look my cheek. That's it. But I have no other heart to give. I can't turn that. I can't turn. I have no other brain to give. So immediately when this thing turns life-threatening, or I perceive that it be life-threatening, I have a right to preserve myself. You understand what I'm saying? All right, all right, all right. Nor does this say that I have to give, I could give my cheek, but I don't have to give my wife cheek, or my son cheek, or my daughter cheek. So it's okay for you to do that to me. I might let you slide one, maybe even two if you don't hit too hard. You know what I'm saying? But you ain't going to go up to her and smack her. You ain't going to go up to her and do that, and you're not going to do that to him. You know, I don't think you would want to. At a certain age, you ain't going to be able to. All right? All right? Are y'all feeling what I'm saying here? All right? Uh, what I'm saying is, is that the scripture, when we look at it close, it ain't got nothing to do with, 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 with life-threatening activity. It ain't got nothing to do with the preservation and the defense of others and your loved ones. Huh? And then even in that, Jesus was preaching that a change was going to come, even in all of this. He told his disciples in Luke twenty two thirty six. 36, he says, Then said he unto them, But now he that had a purse, let him take it. And likewise his script, And he that had no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. People are like, what version that is? What apocryphal jubilee jasher that is? That's the 66 books of the Bible. Jesus was telling his disciples to buy them a sword. That's why they had swords in the garden to begin with. Because they was following his direction. Now, he never told them to pull it out because he trying to get to the cross. He told them to buy one. All right? Now, let's break that down today. Huh? Let's break that down today. 
if Jesus was here today. Now, we don't operate with swords no more. But Jesus might have said, buy you a smitten lesson. He might have said, buy you a Glock. <laughs> what kind of church I'm in today? Oh, I'm having fun. I'm having fun up in here for a lady. I'm having so much fun. That's the scripture. Now, watch this closely. Watch this closely. He don't even, he just don't say buy your sword. He says sell your, to buy your sword. It's so indispensable. It's so important that the nice pair of jeans that you got, <laughs> that Versace shirt you got, <laughs> you sitting at home with no protection. Jesus said, you better sell that Gucci and get you a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? And why would he ever tell them to buy something that they never would have the right to use? Are you hearing what I'm talking about? You see? But you drinking their Kool-Aid. You drinking their CNN non-violent, sell all the guns, stop the violence, because of the mass shootings. Now, when we was having mass shootings in L.A. with the Bloods and the Crips, they were never talking about taking no guns away. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. We give God the praise. But now, mass shootings are happening. now, And everybody getting what we've been getting in Little Rock. They're getting what we've been getting in Baton Rouge. <laughs> They've been getting what, they, what we've been getting in Houston. Huh? That's been going on in the hood. We've been at parties and they come through and they spray with a drive-by. We've been at weddings and they've been spraying. They've been spraying everywhere. They've been spraying in every hood. When they were spraying, they ain't never in the 80s and the 90s talked about no gun control. They was pushing guns into our neighborhood. In fact, they was using the gun money to fund government CIA programs. But now, now the mass shootings done changed color. And we need gun control. Now, if you crazy enough to drink that Kool-Aid and buy that, when Jesus just told me I need to buy me one, I need to sell these Nike, these, these shoes and give me... He said, sell your garment. Sell your garment. He whether you walk around with no shirt on. <laughs> but you strap. <laughs> I'm obeying Jesus. I mean, my wife beat it, but I'm obeying Jesus. I'm barefoot out there, but babe, I got me a little bad 25 on my hip. I'm... Woo! My God, my God. Can we understand what the Bible preaches about theology? And violence. You see? And it's because black folk don't know who they are yet. There's the reason why we buy that kind of stuff, because we don't know who we are yet. We just don't know who we are yet. All right? And they're putting that out there because 2019 was the, was the line in the sand. And the awakening is happening. And they saying, oh, we got to, come on, y'all turning all y'all guns. We're going to outlaw it. You know? Watch this, watch this, watch this. It's because we don't know who we are. Last point of the morning. We're going to talk about Judah. All right? Y'all still up? Yeah. All right. Just entertain me for a few more minutes. Just a few more minutes, and then we're going to get out of here. How many people are all right? Y'all okay? All right. Last point. Judah. In Numbers 2-9, when I say Judah, I mean the uh, current black so-called African Americans who are here via the Atlantic slave trade, via West Africa, Negro land, via the Niger River Valley, the Sahara Desert, all the way back to our homeland. 
That's the track that we made. Historically, biblically proven. All right? All right? We are those people. And we are not only those people, specifically, we are Judah. And that's why. <laughs> that's why we act the way we act. We praise the way we praise. That's why our hair look the way it look and our skin look the way it look. It's all about it. And that's it's just what it is. You can go to Africa today in West Africa and you'll find, hallelujah, places with biblical names. You'll find the old maps of uh, places that was called Judah, places that was called this and that, because we were there. We were there. And we are those people. As the tribe of Judah, Numbers 2.9 teaches us, and the rest of the scriptures I'm going to show you, teaches us that amongst the 12 tribes, Judah had an important role amongst the 12 tribes. Judah had a job. We was the muscle. We was the people. And you know it. Your body, your DNA, and everything about you attest to it. The Bible says in Numbers 2 9, out of all the tribes, when Israel would march out, Judah would go first. <laughs> Numbers 2 9, all that were numbered in the camp of Judah were 100,000, four score, thousand, and six, 6,400 throughout all their armies, all right? These shall first set forth. What he meaning is, the translation it says, as we march as a nation, Judah will lead the way. They will march out first. They was built for it. All right? Numbers 10, 14 and the NLT corroborates this. It says, Judah's troops led the way. They marched behind their banner. What's the banner of Judah? What's the flag of Judah? Come on, show me my pick I got up there. You know what our flag look like? You know what our flag got on it? You know who Judah really is? You know who God see Judah? Huh? Judah, our tribe's banner is a lion. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me up in here. Y'all not hearing me up in here. That's why Jesus, coming from our tribe, he is called the what? The lion of the tribe of Jew. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me up in here. Woo! When God thought of you and thought of your people and said, what I'm going to use to describe Leola? What I'm going to use to describe Sam? What I'm going to use to describe Montgomery, Dwight? What I'm going to use to describe Randy and Carl and Brian and Kim and Chantel and Grace and Annalise and Omar and TP? What animal I'm going to use to describe them and what I put inside of them? I'm going to use a lion to describe them. You understanding what I'm saying? And that lion tribe, as my people march out, that lion tribe is going to go first. They're going to go first, just in case any trouble come. He say on down in Deuteronomy 33, verse 7, and this is the blessing of Judah. How many people know that God's not going to call you to something without equipping you for it? Little B, watch this, little B. He said, and this is the blessing of Judah. And he said, hear, Lord, the voice of Judah, and bring him unto his people. Let his hands be sufficient for him, and be thou a help to him from his enemies. Two things that would be upon Judah, really three, that God would hear our voice when we call. Hmm. Hmm. That we would know how to pray. Hmm? That our hands would be sufficient. Hmm? And that you would help us with our enemies. Three blessings. Three blessings that's upon this people. Huh? That he would hear us. Can't nobody pray like that. That our hands would be sufficient. That, that phrase in the Hebrew, hands be sufficient, let their hands be great, abundant, strong, 
greater than average. Let their hands have an advantage. Pastor, what you talking about? Well, well, listen, as Judah, genetically, you've been made a little different than everybody else. Everybody know it and see it, but nobody talks about it. I pull a book by John and Teen. It's called Taboo. Give me, give me the cover. It's called Taboo. Why black athletes dominate sports and why we are afraid to talk about it. Did you get that? Why black athletes dominate sports and why we are afraid. He said we, that's white people. Why we are afraid to talk about it. The blessing on Judah was that their hands would be sufficient. I'm going to pull you a quote out of this book. Y'all still up? Okay, 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 okay. Geneticist and exercise physiologist Claude Bouchard at Laval University in Quebec City has run numerous experiments comparing two populations, French-Canadian, that's Europeans, and West African students. Important, West Africa is where we come from. We don't come from all of Africa. Y'all get excited about all of Africa. The rest of Africa is ham. The rest of Africa is kush. You understanding what I'm saying? West Africa is Shem. The Hebrews is us. Our bloodline is not all of Africa. Our bloodline is West Africa. All right? All right? And when you look at it, the West Africans have the attributes that I'm about to describe, the same that we got. He says, Whites, on average, have a higher percentage of slow twitch fibers. Oh, yeah. Than West African blacks, who generally have more of both types of fast twitch fibers. What are you talking about these fast twitch fibers is? The ability for explosion and strength and speed and jumping ability. It's like something happens that can't be explained when we need to get to A and B, and we tell our muscles and our bodies to go. They move at a rate that can't be explained. That's why they watch us in the arenas. You understand what I'm saying? That's why we fill them to capacity. Because it's Marvel-like, superhero-like attributes that come out of us when we in tip-top, con- oh, y'all ain't ready. <laughs> he said, let their hands be sufficient, above average, great. You see, you see? Jim Holden, April 16, 2000, nobody does it better. He has an article. He says, the alleged functional differences are in physique, musculature, metabolic efficiency, hormone levels, and reaction time. Intine cites credible research, for example, that blacks of West African ancestry, which would include most African Americans, have a higher ratio of a fast twitch muscle fiber than whites do, which gives them an edge at leaping and sprinting. Next quote. Generally, people of West African origin have more fast twitch muscles, which allow intense bursts of power. This is why running backs, defensive linemen, wide receivers are almost always black. You don't know who you are. You don't know who you was built for. You don't know. It was born for war, but you just don't know it. He says this, uh, Andrew Free, Free Bowden says this, we don't need any expensive tests. All you have to do is look at the physique. <laughs> she goes on, blacks in basketball are lean and muscularly hard. She's been looking real close, muscularly hard. 
She said, whites have softer muscles, which is why white basketball players have to rely more on skill than blacks who have the advantage of great speed and strength. When they beat us, they don't beat us on speed or strength. They beat us on skill. I got a vision. I see something. I see something. See, in the curse, <laughs> we still had the attributes. <laughs> We still had the superpowers. We still had the running and the jumping, Jesse Owens. But because of the curse, we didn't have the knowledge. My people perish for a lack of. It ain't that they better than you in basketball. It ain't that they better than you in football. It ain't that they better than you in track or hockey or baseball or anything that you want to do. Oh, God, I wish you would want to do something. It ain't that they better than you. It's just that you don't seek knowledge. And because you don't get knowledge, you don't get understanding. And because you don't get understanding, you ain't got no skill. Hey! And without skill, you will not be successful. You ain't learned basketball, but you still could play it. You don't have no understanding and what a pick and roll and how to move and which way to turn. You, but once you know, understand, and get the skill, can't nobody stop you, Judah. Well, y'all got me working today. Y'all got me working today. And this just ain't in sports. It's in everything that you set your hand to do, Judah. <laughs> He had made your hands sufficient for everything that you touch and everything that you do. He had made your hands sufficient. That's why when you get a check, can't nobody work a check like you work a check. <laughs> he had made your hands sufficient. There is a DNA, genetic advantage in you that you must learn how to tap into. Mm. 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 What is this gene? Y'all still up out there? Hold on. I'm working today. It's going, we, going just, look, we, we in overtime right now. That's all it is. We just in overtime. You know what I'm saying? But watch this. Watch this. There is evidence genetically that the distribution of ACTN3, RX gene, polymorphism, boy, that's a lot of words, huh? That it varies between ethnic groups. Remember that ACTN3 RX, because it's a gene that makes people go. He's saying that it varies between ethnic groups, meaning that the races have different amounts of it. The highest frequencies of aura and X alleles were observed in the black population. Oh. Let me show you the slide of that. Huh? Did you know <laughs> that that act in 3G, huh? That's that dream, that gene for sprinting and power. Huh? It show up in black populations. And it's West Africa now. When you, when, you, when you understand West Africa, you understand the, the, the power and the birth. So we're going to have boxing champions, champions out of Nigeria. We're going to have boxing champions out of London, wherever our people is at. All right? That sprint, that burst to get through, to get that, that supernatural. How can I get from here to John and you barely even know how to move? You understand what I'm saying? That burst. That's all, that's, all the, that's all Judah. When you see that, you're going to understand that that's Judah. All right? The Hamites got a different thing. They got that long distance. The ball be in, from Kenya be running in the Boston Marathon. <laughs> ball be like, ball run forever. Why they going to run forever like that? Because they've been running from lions. <laughs> ha, 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 ha. Woo! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Let me get back to All right. Give me the other slide. Give me the other slide. We learning something? 
You see that, that ACTN3, all right, is related to short explosive exercise, such as sprints. You know what I'm saying? It's not that long distance stuff, all right? And they, they could genetically prove that in us, but nobody talk about that. Nobody talk about that. They, they see us, the, 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 boss, the, boss be, the boss be just barely my height, spud webbing, just like, how do you get from here to there? Ray Lewis, how do you get, how, how, what? Tony Dawson said, Herschel Walker, how, Mr. Dwight, we know all this, but nobody want to explain that. And what that's about, that's about Judah. That's about the blessing of God that's upon you. That's about something God gave you. And you got a choice to waste that or to use that for God's glory. Come on, give him some praise up in here. A <clears throat> couple of more scriptures. It's three things that they never wanted to teach the slaves. They never wanted to teach us the Bible, business, in battle, the three B's, the Bible, because they was afraid we'd read it and figure out who we really are. <clears throat> business, because if you learn business, the blessing of the Lord is on your hands, and whatever you touch going to grow. <laughs> Unfortunately, whether it's legal or illegal. <laughs> Look at your name and say, let's do it legal. Tell John Shalana, tell him again. <laughs> I'm playing, John. You ain't selling no drugs, John. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. <laughs> the Bible, business, and battle, warfare. They never wanted us to learn that. Never wanted us to learn that. That's why the Democratic platform got all of y'all, get rid of guns. Oh, help us, get rid of guns. Look what the book of Jasher say about that. Jasher 56, 8. Jacob is about to die. Yeah, it might, might be, my, might be my, my little wake-up call. I'm almost done. Jacob is about to die. 56, 8. And Jacob said unto Judah, I know my son, thou art a mighty man. Got something different about you, Judah. You're a mighty man. But you're might, not mighty for yourself. You are a mighty man for thy brethren. That's why you go out first when the tribes march out. You the hitter. That's what you're about. That's what you was built for. When they're in trouble, they call for the lion. All right? Reign over them. We'll learn later that that power, that might, that blessing, would make us worthy to be royalty. The scepter would never depart from Judah. Royalty would be a part of that. All right? Reign over them, and thy son shall reign over their sons forever. We are the royal tribe. Verse 9. Only teach thy sons the bow and all weapons of war. Ooh, y'all got quiet. You're the royal tribe. you that hitter tribe. But Jacob said, before I die, Judah, understand you've been given something. You got to teach your children. Teach them the bull and teach them the weapons of war. Don't let a generation happen where your children don't know how to protect and defend themselves their loved ones, and the rest of the tribes. That's your job, Judah. You the lion. You the guard. All right? Teach them. Teach them the bull and teach them the weapons of war in order that they may fight the battles of their brother who will rule over his enemy. Where is Judah? Where have we been? And have we remembered the admonition of Jacob to teach our children the bull 
in all weapons of war? Or are we sitting in our homes, huh, watching TV? And if something would hop off, we would have no way to defend ourselves. We don't teach our children no type of martial arts training, and our children don't even know how to shoot a BB gun. That was never God's intention for our people. Our people was always supposed to act like the lion who God saw us as. <laughs> what kind of church am I sitting in? A Bible church. A church that preaches truth. They never wanted us to learn Bible, business, or battle. So you can sit here what you want with your democratic friends and say, we're going to give up all our guns. We're going to give up all violence. Huh? Or you could do with the Bible and the book of Jasher said, and begin to train up your children in the way that they should go. <clears throat> Teach them the bull. You say, Pastor, I don't believe in the book of Jasher. Look at your Bible in 2 Samuel 1 and 17. The Bible going to quote the book of Jasher. And it's not only going to quote the book of Jasher, it's going to quote the exact scripture that I gave you. Because David is going to do what I'm trying to tell you that we should do as a people. He's going to do it back then when he reigned as king. Right after Saul and Jonathan died, David lamented with this lamentation over Saul and over Jonathan, look at verse 18, and he bade also them to teach the children the use of the bow. Behold, it is written in the book of Jasher. Y'all ain't hearing me up in here. <laughs> David says, as long as I'm king, Judah going to know how to protect themselves. They're going to learn the weapons of warfare, not to pick no wars, not to go out and try to bully nobody, not to oppress nobody. But if any situation would hop off where we would get in trouble, we wouldn't have to look for no other race to protect us. We'd be able to protect our own self. Is that pastor saying that? You sure right I'm saying that. And that's how your pastor living. They're going to learn it. They're going to learn martial arts. They're going to learn how to shoot. They're going to learn the bull. They're going to learn all that. If nothing happened, they're going to be able to do clean tricks at parties. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> but if something were to hop on, you see, if something were to hop on, the Lord would be able to depend. You know? What you going to do in your house? And what you going to do for you? We got people in here that can help you. Well, there's learning, like Jesus said, go ahead and sell that shirt, get your gun. Well, you're going to have to learn how to, how, to, how to handle that, how to be safe with that, how to handle it in a responsible fashion. We got people here as a church that can help you with that. You understand what I'm saying? That can teach you how to shoot. And look, they can teach you how to shoot anything. Any, listen, we... We got people from the streets, man, the street. <laughs> and if I'm not in town and I can't do it, I'll teach you, I'll teach you how to shoot it. Me, heaven, you understand what I'm saying? Jay Gradle, Lobardo would love a ministry like this. Huh? What ministry? I'm on, I'm on the assault rifle ministry. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> Lobardo would love that. Well, Alicia, she know I ain't lying. Lobardo would love that. You know what I'm saying? Brother Sam, y'all don't know. Oh, yeah, I'm on the sharpshooter minister. Do it hit a dime from, look, 200 meters away. And then get your change. Look. <laughs> huh? Huh? How to protect yourself, how to eat. That's you, Judah. That's you. Come on, give God some glory. <clears throat> So we've been given, and 
musicians, y'all can slowly make your way. Israel, like, no, Pastor, I ain't coming. Keep going. I'm loving this, Pastor. But Israel, please, just make you. What's that, Israel? <laughs> he said, bring it out. Hallelujah. If y'all can make your way slowly. Look, 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 look. Now, this is it. You've been blessed with something special in your hands. Now, in the hood, we use it for the wrong reason. Now, you're saved now. I don't mean that you don't ever, like you put that away like there's never going to be need. Because in certain situations, amen, God may need to help somebody else, to deliver the innocent, to swim across the channel and get them people off that old man. You understand what I'm saying? You just got to know who you are as a people. You are, you are protect the people. You know, in, in that movie Black Panther, they got like a royal guard. The Dolly Malaja. At least with that, how you say that? Dory Malaja. She knows. She know what that is. You know them girls that cut all their hair off and they good like that. That's how I call them. That. That's how we try. That's how we try. We them hitters, though. We them hitters. And look, you could you you could tell we all. Look how we get started on each other. You know what I'm saying? The people that come, we're going to let them finish. Let them finish. And really, that's why they treat y'all like that on the street, because they can't deal with y'all. They, they got to put that weapon on y'all, because they know that when you get started, they can't deal with y'all like that. You picking them up like that, buddy. <laughs> but it's to, it's to know that, to do it right, and then, watch this. To add knowledge, understanding, and skill. See, they're beating us now because we ain't got that. <laughs> Bryce, Bryce will tell you, Bryce will tell you any day, ain't nobody could do it like them Hebrews. But, but you, get a, you get a white team with skill, with understanding, Montgomery, no, with knowledge on one accord that's going to do what they coach said. It don't matter if we jumping out the gym, we doing 360s, it don't matter if we running and scoring touchdowns. Listen, Bill Belichick going to beat you every time because he got knowledge, he got understanding, and he got skill. And all you got is God-given talent. But Judah, one day you're going to wake up and you're going to add to your God-given talent, knowledge, understanding, and skill. Ha! And when that happens, ain't nobody going to be able to do it like you do it. They ain't going to be able to do it like you do it. Hallelujah. In basketball. Ha. They ain't going to be able to do it like you do it in football. They ain't going to be able to do it like you do it in baseball. They ain't going to be able to do it like you do it in the Bible. They ain't going to be able to do it like you do it, hey, in business. They ain't going to be able to do it like you do it even in battle. I have to get to a place where you say, God, I know you're giving me something, but I'm going to add to what you gave me. So I could operate in skill, knowledge, and understanding. You see? You see? Come on, please be seated. Please be seated. Please be seated. I'm going to read this last little part about you. We gonna go. Genesis 49 and 8, coming out of the NLT. It says this: Judah, all your brothers will praise you. Because that's what your name means. It means praise. <laughs> you will grasp your enemies by the neck, and all your relatives will bow before you. Judah, my son, is a young lion that has finished eating its prey. Like a lion, he crouches and lies down. And for our ladies, like a lioness. Because <laughs> every lion need a lioness, woman of God. Come on, give y'all some praise up in here. Who dares to rouse him up? Who dares to wake up Judah? To bring Judah back to where he and she used to be. 
the scepter will not, will never depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from his descendants, until the coming of the one to whom it belongs, the one whom all nations will honor. Judah, you are the royal seat. You are royalty. And as a testament of that, the King of kings and the Lord of lords come from your lineage, the one that all the nations will honor. He is the lion of our tribe. He is the branch of Jesse. And when he comes, he will expect to find us as he created us. Because every lion need a pack of lions to run with. Anybody hear me up in here? And I'm ready to run with my lion. Anybody hear me up in here? I'm ready to run with my lion. Hey! They done put us to sleep. So in the next months, we're going to have to be thinking about Heavy and all the rest of security. TP, Lombardo, we're going to have to be thinking about how can we develop Judah again? How can we develop our sons and daughters again in a very peaceful, non-aggressive way? Developing them so that they can make the most of what's in their hands. Because every time, if you just rely on talent, they're going to beat you on skill. And you're going to sit there and say something wrong with me, and God's going to say nothing wrong with you. You just ain't ever open a book. <laughs> you ain't even watch a YouTube video on it and you expect to go there and beat them people and people done spent eight years on something. Nah, nah. We're gonna get the skill and understanding. In the Bible, hmm? in business, and in battle. Come on, give y'all some praise up in this house. <laughs> give him some praise up in this house hallelujah first lady you all right would you be able to help me or are you are you good what you gonna do what you gonna do ah. hallelujah come on now come on y'all got a microphone hallelujah glory to god get first lady the microphone hallelujah good altar call hallelujah Glory to the Most High God. First Lady going to take care of the rest of the service. Amen. Get ready for an altar call. You must be out of breath. Woo, I done work hard. I done work hard. I done work hard. I done work hard. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, I wasn't expecting that at all. But like the Bible says, be ready in season and out of season. So, like whenever I was first saved, our old pastor used to say that the doors of the church are open. And so if any of you are willing and wanting to come and know the Lord for yourself personally, you are more than welcome to come. He is a savior. He is the only savior. I welcome you to come. Ushers, please, I don't know the protocol, but go ahead and open up the gates. And all who want to know him. You see, before we get to, before we come to Christ, we have a weight on us. And we have a heavy burden on us. But you see, when you come and lay your burden to the, to the cross, at the foot of the cross, something supernatural happens. That the burdens that you walked in with, I promise you, they leave immediately. They leave immediately. So if you would, the doors of the church are open. You are more than welcome to come. If you want to know Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are more than welcome to come. Saints, like they used to say, go ahead and pray, saints. Yeah, go ahead and pray. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, God is such a good God. It's like the ark that is not going to be open forever. We have a limited time. Like Pastor said, mercy only lasts a little while. 
So before all judgment comes, mercy is first. So this is our opportunity to choose. Because you see, it's good to be on this side of God and not the other side of God. Because we don't want to see him in his fullness. So if you are willing, come on to the altar and receive Christ. Come on to the altar. We're going to keep it open. Maybe y'all have a little song. Anybody else? This is very a very spiritual moment. Folks are being translated out of darkness and into the marvelous light of Christ. It's such a beautiful thing. Today is the birthday for many people today. I remember my spiritual birthday and it was the best thing that ever happened to me. If anybody want to change a new life, Christ is the best way. Miss Sarah, he's the only way. He said that he's the truth and the life. The doors of the church are open. Can you see it? I can see the gates of heaven. The angels standing on each side. And the gates are open. And there is an all call going on. And they're welcoming you in right now. This is a spiritual exchange happening. Thank you, Father, for opening up. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Go ahead and touch the person on the side of you, on the shoulder. We're going to pray. Oh, we give God all the honor and the praise today. He is such a good God. Thank you, Pastor, for the privilege of being a soul winner this morning. Most high God, we come to you, Lord God, thanking you for your cross, and I thank you for the people that have decided to put their sins at the foot of your cross. Thank you that you did not allow um, Peter to stop you from going to the cross. We thank you that you came and did what you said that you were going to do. And you said that you came for sinners, God. And so for that, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord God. If all of you that are at the altar would repeat after me and say, Most high God, we thank you for this opportunity to be at your feet. We are nothing without you. We are sinners. I have lied, I have stolen, I have done wrong, I have said wrong things, I have thought wrong thoughts, and I am sorry, and I am sorry. I ask you that you would forgive me this day and now carry the burden of my sins. I believe. I believe, I believe that you came, died, and rose again on the third day. I believe that you are now seated at the right hand, at the right hand of majesty. And I believe that on my day, when you call me home, I will see you again. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Now, Holy Ghost, you said once we believe that you would seal us. So, Father, we're asking that you would seal us with the Holy Ghost of promise. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Go ahead and rejoice. The Bible says when one comes to the faith that the angels rejoice. The Bible says that when one comes to the faith, the angels rejoice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You guys are dismissed. I'm so out of protocol, but I love you and have a blessed day. Go ahead and tell somebody shalom.
and may the love of God be with them. And don't forget to take up your sword. Buy and sell the garments that you need. Bless you, people of God. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. Put my boots on. Yeah, you got to go to West Africa. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Liberia. Thank you, Lord. We don't even know our place. Wow. Wow. Because right now, the Muslims are taking over. bless you. May he keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you, Judah. Bless you with shalom, peace. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Remember, Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be doing the post show at this moment. So if there's anybody that would love to share a minute or two of what they got out of this word, feel free to come up on the side. We would love to have you up here. We'll be giving $100 to each person. Boy, y'all started coming now. Huh? Look, look. I'm just playing, though. Not on the $100, but we do need people to come.
Just nervous. I'm over here, like zoning out. Make me feel better. I'll have. I don't know. I can't feel about myself. Yeah, I'm What's going on, Philadelphia family? Thank you so much for tuning in. Stand with us for the Reflections post show. Man, just awesome, bro. Awesome work today, man. All about Judah. All about who we are as a people, man. For such a time as this, man. I was shocked today. But he brought out that chair. We're going to put up that chair up here <laughs> today, man. Look. If you're on the chat right now, what I want you to do, man, put some fire flames on the chat right now. If they got a little lion symbol, man, put that lion symbol on the chat. I don't know if you can do that, but do that, man, because today, man, we're just an awesome word. I'm just so grateful to what, what Pastor is doing, what Pastor is sharing. And um, we in some interesting times, man. This is a church that, that, that we, 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 we're not hiding from the truth, man. It, it's really being said from this pulpit, from this stage, and it is a blessing, it's an honor. Uh, to be a part of this ministry with pastor saying such um impactful uh truths that's going on right now y'all saw how he said you know at the beginning of the message that you know from last sunday man, it, it was it was real and um the powers that be are listening so it's important you guys as our online family man to uh to share the message uh, to be connected with us and please get the app Please get the Philly app. It's very important because not everything that's being taught is going to be able to be on here on, um, on YouTube. So get the app, download it, PCC Lafayette, get it on the App Store, get it on Google Play Store. You're going to want to uh, get that uh, just so that you always be able to be connected with us as a ministry. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So we're going to talk about what the um, sermon was on today, man. That's a beautiful woman of God. Tell you guys, tell us your name and, and just what you got from the message today. You, you can, whoever want to go okay, first okay. is on y'all. Um, my name is Tyra, um, and the message was really good. Um, anybody that knows me knows that I'm a bit of a vigilante. So like You're I, a vigilante? I, yeah. So really? I have to, Okay, you, you know, have to share I, a little I, bit. I am, oh, yeah, okay. I, I come with Sound a like she got, she got a sword, y'all. She, she letting yeah. us know she got a sword. So, um, and as you get older, you know, you kind of figure out what's right and wrong to you and biblically. Right, and right. you get your principles and what you stand on. And I'm the type of person, if I see that somebody is being treated wrong or something doesn't line up like it's supposed to, I can't. It's like a fire inside of me. Like, come I cannot on. keep quiet. I can't just sit back and watch it. Um, but in growing up and gaining wisdom, you know, and kind of 
having that fire to where you jump on the situations, uh, it don't always work out like it's supposed to. And it's times to where after the situation passed, I'm like, man, was that problematic? Am I being problematic? Should I right. just not speak up or not say something or, you know, hold my peace, you know, to yeah. keep the peace? You know, so. That discernment. Uh, yeah. When to, exactly. When to let the fire out or when to yeah. hold it back. So yeah. uh, with Pastor teaching and everything he said, it just kind of, I guess, reinforced that that's not a bad thing to have that fire for Amen. what's right and for others, you know, and how they're being treated or, you know, whatever the situation situation may be, Amen. it's good to have that fire, but filling out when, where, and how, you know, and as I'm getting older, that's something that I'm, I'm navigating. So just yeah. to hear him talk on it and give those nuggets was great. Now that proper balance, yes. not being too much on the left, not being not too, too much, much on the right. right. Exactly. Gotta, God is right there in the middle. <laughs> oh my God, what you have for us today? What um, you got? So my name is Kylie, and so I like that Pastor clarified what was right and what was wrong and what was okay with the defense thing because um, I've been put in a lot of situations and it wasn't me um, mm -hmm. as the victim or but I've been put in a lot of situations where it's like you don't know how to react like what should I do especially if violence is there um, I'm a keep the peace type of person but then also being active you can actively keep the peace if that's necessary or if you need to do a little bit more do a little bit more yeah. so I've been learning how to have that balance and how to um, I guess you could say know what's right for the situation and help others out I don't like when people get bullied or yeah. um, picked on or anything like that so it's like what can I do to help the situation right. you know and not have you be the the joke or whatever the case may be and a lot of people that there's like a misconception of Christianity just because we believe us and just because we bought the Lord that we're not about that Life right, right, too. Right, right. You know, we like we, I have a pass now. Okay. Yeah, right, right. You know, and think about that situation in Alabama. It makes me want to. Somebody can. Hey, can can somebody pop? Y'all bring up that chair. We got to. When Pastor brought up the chair, I was like, Oh, I laughed. I lost camera. He went there. Laughing. He went there, man. And uh, but it, it's just you have to talk about what's relevant. And some churches may shy away from talking about what's going on in the world, but no, we we're gonna we gotta talk about it. Like we can't just ignore the elephant in the room. We're gonna, we're gonna, you know, discuss it and share it. And, and wow, hey, bro, th this has been going, on, going viral. This is so funny. But you know, that shows us as as a people that the unity that that is happening. Really? You know, uh, and that that whole statement, that statement that um, we are not our ancestors. We we be different. All right, we're not our ancestors. This is a different time. And when Pastor mentioned about the um, 2019, that was when, you know, the line in the sand has been drawn to 400 years is over. Not only are we not our ancestors, but they, on the other side, they're not their ancestors neither. What y'all used to be able to do, it's not, it's not, it's different now. I don't want to say the roles have changed because in no way, shape, or form are we um, ugly or vindictive towards people right no. but it's at a point where we know our strengths and i mean if we have to use it we're going to use it exactly something exactly. else uh so kind of how you saying like we're not our ancestors um i don't know if y'all remember a while back pastor preached a sermon uh talking about the theology of the earth and whether it's flat or round or whatever right. and he quoted a passage somebody wrote basically saying we tried to convince them that it was round, this generation not taking it, so we're just gonna wait to the next. Mm. And that's popping into my head when you're talking about the generation thing, because I have two girls. And me and Cameron, um, my husband Cameron, we were talking about it yeah. afterwards, you know, just instilling the right things in them. So how we're not our ancestors, we have to make sure even more so that our children are the same. So how Pastor said, you know, we have talent, but what is talent to skill? And it's, you know, a confirmation because I heard a sermon yesterday and the lady in the um, sermon, Stephanie Ike, she was saying, God doesn't care about your talent. He cares about the things that you can choose to do or not do and yes. what you do with that. Yes. And it's, it's just kind of all connected, especially, like I said, having children. So it's like, okay, I'm not going to allow them to go straight off a of talent. You know, mm -hmm. though God bless us with these things, what are we going to add to it? Yeah, so right. I'm going to add that knowledge that he brought today about, you know, when, where, and how. And also the knowledge that we don't have to be passive. Because that's what they're teaching us to be passive, you know. And you don't have to be passive aggressive. There's a time, you know, yes. to kill and there's a yes. time for peace. And, and that's skilled. And it goes even when, when you come thinking about church and just like, you know, even the preaching gift. A lot of our people, especially in our, in our culture, in our ethnicity group, you know, we got the, the, the gift of preachers, yeah. 
right? But not all preachers got the skill to really deliver the message of truth. So that's what makes this ministry so set apart and so different that not only do we have that pastor has that teaching gift, but it's also with skill and knowledge and understanding. And look what it's working. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> people are getting saved. People are getting delivered. People are knowing who we are as people that we are Judah. And I love how he broke down and explained that today. Uh, us being Judah is a, it's a special, it's a special thing. And we got to take it with, um, with honor and respect and use that when much is given, much is going to be required from us, you know? So we, we, we deal with the world in a different way, uh, with mercy and grace, but don't play with us. <laughs> and we don't play with God neither. Amen. Amen. Woman of God, thank y'all so much for talking with us today. Thank y'all. God bless y'all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo, man. Awesome message today, y'all. Awesome message today. Um, Judah. Judah is back. <laughs> Judah is back. And this is just an exciting time. Uh, and I'm just so glad that we, we are in a ministry that, that could discuss things that's going on, things that's happening. And because uh, it's on everybody's hearts. Like, you can't just, like, not talk about it or not discuss it. It, it got to be, it got to be shared, man. What's going on? What's up, brother? Cam, in ah. the building. What's happening? Deacon, how y'all doing, man? Good, 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 good man. man. Go ahead, have that. Y'all got the mic. Well, yeah, man. Kind of, I'll just pick it back up off of what y'all were talking about. Yeah. And a book came to my mind, and it's by an author by the name of Sun Tzu. And it's called The Art of War. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And what popped in my mind is, it's not just enough to want to go to war and to war, mm -hmm. but you have to know how to war. Yeah. And that's what comes in when Pastor was talking about, you can have all the talent in the world. Mm -hmm. super ta they got super talented kids in college football. Mm -hmm. But one thing that they lack is book smarts which is what keeps them from going to the next level, yeah. you know, or in high school, you know, so they had, look, they explosive, they look 50 yards to carry, but they don't have the skill yeah. to get to the next level. And it's kind of like your speed is a hundred, but your agility is 50. You could run in a mm -hmm. straight line super fast, but when you get hit with a defender, you can't shake them, you, can't shake big, yeah. you know? Yeah. So it's not just about the talent. It's about the skill as well. That's it's not cute. just enough to go to war, but you have to know how to war. Wow. You know? Wow. So that was just a thought that I had. Amen. Amen. Deacon. Awesome. Awesome. Well, um, I was thinking on more of the, uh, the A part of the message. What, you know, when he talked about, you know, protecting your family, um, you know, uh, being, the, being the head of the household and, you know, not letting anyone come in and you know do anything do that do what they want to do with right. your wife and kids um and even in your church you know what i'm saying yeah. you know you know about you know it goes off what everybody's saying you know be the defender be the strong one you know and um it also uh it just built up to me i think it built it built up the men of god today to hear um that you can be strong you can be yeah. um on the defense at times you could be you know on the offense as well yeah you know when you could be you could stand tall you yeah, could right. be strong you could be like you know no you, you, right. it's not yeah, going down it, like that in, you know in this world today there's, there's like an undoing of that yeah right. you know of the, that manhood that strength like yes. we don't want that yes. to be talked about or right. shown or, or and when it's depicted is it's, it's, right. it's like an unraveling uh, right. that they're trying to do yeah yeah yes, <laughs> yes. and I'm, you know it was a i believe you know it was a great message um, uh, for the people of God, those online, just everybody who tuned in, I think they received something real good today. Amen. Uh, Amen. In this message, just uh, you know, being built up today. Um, you know, and not only the men, the women as well. Um, you know, because we all together on this. Right. Um, I think everybody was strengthened in a special way today. I really right. enjoyed this message. Amen. So. Yeah. Now, now, what y'all think about Alabama? Let me rub on that. I, I, didn't, <laughs> I, I didn't get to uh, touch it during service, so I. Uh, when y'all saw the video uh, well man and to the video too but they were just to pick it back what, what he mm -hmm. was saying just building us up as men yes. and the culture nowadays especially surrounding the European side of Christianity mm -hmm. they will almost make you feel as if you are not a Christian if you stand up for, for yourself mm -hmm. and for your family 
there is almost this atmosphere or you that for will, your people or for your people they will all they will, they will they will say oh man he's a christian he shouldn't have did that and that's not right as pastor just talked about mm -hmm. there is a time to war yes you know yes. and th there is a time for peace but with the Al alabama situation i just think that was you know i, I think it was incredible just to see our people coming together on one accord it you is. know now the key to that is i believe it's just like pastor said now don't go out here you know <laughs> you, you the next don't day all the way and, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. want to try to no. pick fights you know what i'm right, saying because right, sometimes right, with right. our people man we we act first think later mm -hmm. you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying and now we seeing that's going on it's not telling us to go full militant but what it's showing us is is how to war how should we come together how should we come to the aid of our brethren the aid of our bro i love that part us being able to and it is that coming to the defense coming for the, to help yes. we're not trying to we're not trying to pick a fight yes no no we good right. but you're not gonna do that right. to my people you're not gonna do that to the elderly person no not when it right. was just y'all was in the wrong you're just trying to tell you and now you you, you scrap it on them right come on yeah oh. man and when pastor said you know uh turn the other cheek you know what i'm saying it's a it's a it's a it's a moment of grace with these things you know yes, what i'm saying yes, yes. Uh, you can only go so far with treating us like this yeah. in this day and age you know what i'm saying and, right you know i hope everybody kind of received that and you know in 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 in, in a way of wisdom as well as strength you know because yeah. it's, it's a way to have wisdom uh you know and skill with strength you know what i'm saying that's the that's the that's the key to things you know Meekness. not just being a, uh, a strong man who could just tear everything tearing up everything up but, yeah yeah you know, yeah no Been wind able to harness wind, that strength Meekness. when and where and you know yes to, yeah. to to handle business you know that's what i'm right, saying and, that's right. and also teaching um teaching your kids teaching your children um good right and wrong and you and, and there's no way to know right and wrong but through christ but through you know being in the house of god yes. being right. in a place where you know doing the right thing is taught you yeah, know right. what i'm saying not just being a teaching good carnal things but yeah the knowledge of god you know the ways of christ amen and, and you know and teaching your kids the right way i like those three but being strengthy those, but those being a person of strength. That, he, that he brought up the yeah. you know, bible business and battle, and battle. And battle yeah. yeah you know that was good and i, I was a big convicted when it came to the you know sharing with your children you know you know teaching them the bow teaching them you know what i'm saying get into some type of martial yeah, or something man. like that you know so that that was you know convicted on my part because we have never really you know looked into that per se you know what i'm saying uh but that that's going to cause me to you yeah. know i have a daughter and i got a grandson and you know it's right it, it, it's time to, to do those get them active in those kinds of things and know that it's okay yeah that we should be doing that the scriptures tell us yeah that that's what we should do right matches the scripture you know? Exactly, that's man. How we do size, size Talking about here. that Jash. Well, right. I like when he bring up Jash. Yeah, yeah, man. Oh, yeah. That was strong. And that was actually the charge of Adam when he was first created. God told him to tend and keep the garden, which means the garden protect. Mm. You know, the garden serve. Right. You know, right. so his right. job was to guard, guard, to be a protector. Yeah. You know, especially for his rib, which came out of, which came out of him. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so I just, man, it was just just a powerful message it and it, it built it me up it. as a man and it opened my eyes as to what I should be doing in my household you know as yeah. a young father as a young husband it was just monumental it yeah. just it it changed my entire way of thinking yeah it did glory to God I agree glory to God brothers thank y'all so much for talking appreciate with us today bro. man appreciate right, y'all man love y'all thanks for Love having you too hallelujah hallelujah awesome message on today you guys man Judah Judah is back there, there's a, a, a an awakening, y'all. That awakening is happening. That awakening is transpiring. It's it, it's going on. It's 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 real. It's real. So, man, got a book we want to talk about, man. Um, Covering the shepherd. One of our own deacons, uh, Deacon James Kevin Chavis. This is available in our bookstore. Um, this is about praying, why we should be praying for our shepherd, our pastor, Pastor Omar Tebow. Y'all, he is, is, is embarking upon giving this truth out to you, and um, there's risk involved with this truth, right? So we, I'm asking you guys, man, to, to um, pray for our shepherd.
pray for Pastor Omar Tebow every day you can. Every time you sit down for a meal, man, throw up a prayer for Pastor Omar and his family. A supernatural hedge of protection to always constantly be uh, around him in these days that we're in, in this awakening of Judah um, is happening. So get the book. It's um, Covering the Shepherd. J. Kevin Chavis. It's available on our bookstore, philadelphiacc.org. You can order it. Or if you're in here in the building, when you visit us, you can grab it and get it in the bookstore. I'm thinking James Malvo. We're wrapping it up to, uh, today, you guys. Got a couple of dates I wanted to remind you guys all about. We have the karaoke night that's happening August 25th. If you're in town, that's a Friday night, August 25th, sponsored by our Philadelphia worship team. Come on out. We're just going to have a whole bunch of fun, man, and just have a karaoke night and just sing unto the Lord, man, and just have a good time and a good fellowship uh, with one, one another. Uh, that same weekend, the evangelism ministry will be going out into the community, uh, sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ and awakening, awakening Judah in these neighborhoods out here in Lafayette. Also, coming up, our first annual Feast of Tabernacles is happening October 5th, 6th, 7th, and the 8th. An entire weekend dedicated to that Feast of Tabernacles. We're going to learn about Tabernacles. We're going to have health fairs. We're going to have the women's luncheon, men's camp out. There's going to be a 5K run, uh, run, run our walk. Uh, there's going to be a color run for the kids, softball tournament, basketball tournament. Uh, both the kids can be a part of that, man. So registration, we want everybody to register for uh, the, the Feast of Tabernacles. Tabernacles, and you can click on what activities you want to be a part of. There is a fee for everything, but go ahead. Well, not for everything. Some of the things, there is a fee. Uh, just go to the website, philadelphiacc.org. You can just click on the banner that says Tabernacles. It's going to take you right to the to the form. So we want to, we want to invite you all to come on out, man. Everybody that's from out of town, you got a moment, got a weekend to come down south. We believe it's going to be a little bit cooler uh, come October, man. So join us for the, the first annual Feast of of tabernacle so that's it for today you guys just an awesome message i'm just grateful for it man so let me bless you most high god we just thank you lord god for our online families that have been uh dedicated to watching us online and have been uh tied in and offering to the ministry you just pray that they, you would add just a supernatural blessing upon them for being and choosing to be connected with this ministry we thank you for leading those uh to us lord god and we know that they belong to you father god and that you are gonna cover and protect them and there you're gonna continue to grow their walk with you most high god thank you for them bless their week bless uh all that they put their hands to do and to touch father god we thank you for your presence upon us and our families covered our shepherd pastor omar and his family lord god keep them and bless them give them peace and shalom and may shalom be to all our families that are watching right now in jesus name we pray amen shalom <laughs>